right, Toledo, they've already won the West and have clinched a trip to Detroit to play for a MAC championship in a couple of weeks. But on the left side, on the east, still four teams at large there with Bowling Green just one game back of Ohio. So what needs to happen for Bowling Green to get to Detroit in a couple of weeks? Well, they got to win. they got to win this game. That would set up a game in Athens, Ohio next week against the Ohio Bobcats that potentially could be a win and go to Detroit game. It still depends on what Kent State and Buffalo do along the way. So a big mess to figure out in the East. It all starts with Bowling Green trying to get a win here tonight with Rocky Boyman. Connor Onion. Now, it was disappointing for Bowling Green last week. They got blown out against Kent State, but uh, they've shown an ability to bounce back all season long. And they got a ton to play for tonight, right? But it's just a matter of which Bowling Green team shows up. The one that rattled off three straight conference wins and looked really good, or the team that threw up a clunker last week to Kent State. But again, talking to the coaches this week, they seem real fired up and real engaged tonight to come get this one. Well, a big part of the reason that they're maybe a little bit ahead of their scheduled rebuild is their quarterback, Matt McDonald. Yeah, Matt McDonald, he came over here with their head coach Scott Leffler three years ago and I think by now he knows the ins and outs of this system he's playing the best he has played the best football of his career it's a very complex system lots of motion shift they play about 15 tight ends right give a lot of formations but I think Matt McDonald knows the ins and outs of it and he does a really good job delivering the football and they got some guys that can make some things happen with it. 15 tight ends that's a long travel list Rock. <laughs> let's right. see if he gets him to all 15 tonight well, at quarterback for Toledo, DeGuan Finn came back from injury last week, helped them clinch the MAC West, but he's in a boot tonight and in street clothes, will not play because of that ankle, and it's Tucker Gleason who started two weeks ago back of center tonight. Yeah, that's a shame. I mean, DeGuan Finn is one of the most electrifying players in the MAC, but it's going to be Tucker Gleason he's going to start. He started a couple weeks ago against Eastern Michigan and played fantastic. 238 yards, three touchdowns. He's a Georgia Tech transfer. And he's a guy out now. He's not going to go run around as much as Daquan Finn, but he can light it up deep. Hey, you mentioned a big time recruit, and his quarterback's coach was his coach in high school, so he'll be on the same page as far as play calling tonight. And he'll get a chance to touch the ball first with Bowling Green winning the toss and deferring to the second half. Well, he told you 18,000 at this game last year down the road at Bowling Green. Students have showed out strong. And so is the community as well. I'm from Ohio. This is Ohio football weather right here, baby. Let's get it. You are one of the players you talked about <laughs> off the top. Dreamed of a night like tonight. There you go. First snow game for these guys. Jacquez Stewart back to receive the opening kick. And here we go in the battle for I-75 from the glass bowl. And Stewart inside the five will have a chance to return it. And Jacquez Stewart with a stiff arm to the outside. He's ushered out at the 15-yard line. So we just talked about no Daquan Finn. A little less in terms of the quarterback run tonight, but Gleason still has terrific wide receivers to get the ball to. He does. I think just man for man, Toledo is the most talented team in the MAC. I think that's a guarantee with that one. And a lot of explosion offensively. You'll see three running backs. You'll see a bevy of wide receivers. they got a really good tight end who's great in the red zone as well. And how about this for a toughness play for Tucker Gleason? It's 25 degrees. He's from Florida, and he comes out at quarterback in the start with no <laughs> sleeves tonight. So Gleason's opening snap is a handoff, and Bowling Green's ready for it right up the gut. They gave it to Micah Kelly, and D.J. Taylor makes the stop from linebacker. Now, as good as Toledo is offensively, I think Bowling Green has one of the best fronts in the entire conference. They've got some dudes up front on that D-line, and we just saw one of the linebackers already. Now they rotate those guys quite a bit. They rotate the linebackers quite a bit. And Gleason's first pass is incomplete. Mikel Barkley, right in the numbers, but couldn't make the play. I think it's going to be interesting here. Shows up now. This rivalry game, but they technically don't have anything more to play for in terms of getting in the championship game. They're already in it. Bowling Green, on the other hand, it's it's lose and go home. So treats this thing early on if they can get some momentum. Now, even with that, Jason Candle, the Toledo head coach, said we're not resting. No. Us. Now right. the exception is Dequan Finn. There. So on third down. Lease into the air and right back to Barkley who makes the catch this time but he's roped down well shy of the first. The second 
big play on this drive for Bowling Green. DJ Taylor showed up tonight, that's for sure. That's a great stop. And again, I think the more Bowling Green can make some things happen early and just kind of take some of the life out of Toledo, the, the, the better off they'll be as this thing goes on and they can fall back to their offense. You'd like this as a defensive guy playing in the snow, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, like, cause, you, know, like, you like to think it's a little bit harder in the pass game. That's out of defense. Well, we saw Toledo have to go short and have a drop in the pass game through the elements on their first drive. And now it's Bowling Green getting a touch for the first time. Talked about that complex offense for Scott Leffler. Him and McDonald, his quarterback, are right on the same page, though, working together for a long time. Absolutely. And that's everything, right? It's, it's reps. I mean, how many reps have those guys gotten together? How many plays have been called? Uh, the biggest thing about Matt McDonald, and again, I think this is his best season so far, is just getting him the, the protection, right? I mean, he's been sacked 30 times this year. And, and more so lately. If that offensive line can give him some protection, he'll be all right. And it starts with a run for Jason Patterson, their lead back. And he gets a couple on first down. A, a very diverse run game. I mean, you'll see everything. You'll see counter, you'll see power, you'll see zone, you'll see jet sweep, a little bit of everything, which, again, that's tough on a defense because you never really know what to expect playing and play out. You'll see tight ends carrying the ball. Oh, yeah, exactly, a little bit of everything. Crazy see, formations. See end arounds and the fullback belly play when they get down toward the goal line. Off the fake to Patterson. First throw for McDonald. And that's complete to Hilaire. And he gets midfield. Sets up third down and five. Hilaire is by their best receiver. Go to McDonald for sure here. And you can see it's about getting that ball out of his hand. He don't want to sit back there in camp. And now here we go with a third and five. That this front for Toledo can really get after. Watch out for number one, Deswan Johnson, maybe the best defensive lineman in the map. And the Bowling Green staff called him a monster. He's lined up right over the ball here. For a team that struggled on third down this season. McDonald gets it out quick again, and that's complete to Harold Fannin, his tight end. He's got a first down. Really like what Matt McDonald is doing with this quick pass game. And some of these wide receivers, yeah, they, they've got some hype to them. But look, catch that ball, knows where to go with it, and that ball is out of there. No hesitation, be decisive. Well, you wonder, too, with snow that's kind of like rain. It's, it's a snowy, rainy type mix. What's the grip going to be like? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you can add some tackiness to the ball. Uh, McDonald goes down. There's Johnson, who you're just talking about, is a monster coming up the shoot. Yeah, I don't think he was blocked on that one, which, uh, <laughs> I might want to assess that. that one, yes, because again, Deswan Johnson, if we get a look, there he is. I mean, look, that's just a quick spin move. And he had Bronson Warner just all out of sorts. I mean, Deswan Johnson, I mean, you watch him against Ohio State, and he was making some of those offensive linemen they have look foolish. This guy is a real player. They played the Buckeyes in September, and a flag comes out. And, and these are the things that, that Bowling Green just can't afford. You know, just a self-inflicted mistake. This is not a, hasn't been a big play offense with a ton of explosive plays. They need to put drives together, and now you're way, way behind the chance. The sack for Johnson, and now the false start on Bronson Warner, the right guard. So a run for Bowling Green on second down and forever. And still behind that original line of scrimmage after Patterson gets him closer. So they're playing for not only to keep the season alive for Bowling Green, but they're playing for that. And that was more of the dialogue than the standings this week was this trophy that's on the line. Anytime there's a trophy at stake or a ring at stake, the guys are going to play hard. They want that hardware. Yeah, that trophy is about a, a decade old. Maybe when it's not third down, we can tell the, the deeper story of <laughs> That's right. what that trophy used to be. Well, there's movement up front for now, they call it. The flag was a little late coming out, but you had Patterson up at that wing back spot, and he flinched. I think if Patterson had played this off a little better, he might have a call. 
And here's where you're really at a disadvantage. Toledo's secondary is, is one of the best in the map. Excellent pass defense, two of the best corners as well. And they stand up Nate Givehan and bring some pressure off the edge with Givehan. And McDonald gets away and it's broken up incomplete. Quinion Mitchell, one of the best in the country at doing just that, has the breakup. Quinion Mitchell. Four interceptions on the year, and it's really a six. He had two wiped away because of penalties, but you can see why. He just does what any great corner does, break on the ball. You know, because if he's not there to bat that thing away, C.J. Lewis might be in the end zone right now. Great job of breaking on the ball by Mitchell. When you're talking about putting together highlights for an NFL tape, the ones you catch that get wiped off for penalties still go on the tape, right? No, absolutely. Trust me. So he's got six, according to the tape. <laughs> Sounded like you had been there before. Oh, yeah. So, fair catch inside the 15 for Adam Beal. And Toledo and Bowling Green will punt on their opening drive. Hey, so for the battle of I-75, the whole county comes out, <laughs> including Kareem Hunt, the former Toledo Rocket. Kareem the Dream, what a career he had from 2013 to 2016. 5,000 yards, 44 touchdowns, wearing that Toledo uniform. It's one of the great ones. Well, they play, the Browns play in Buffalo on Sunday, so he's probably just getting used to the snow. There's supposed to be like two feet of snow in that game, right? Yeah. Is, is what I'm hearing? Ooh, better you than me. Dream. Oh, I was going to say, I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> you have fun with that if you're going. I'm not. <laughs> so, he's a three and out for Toledo on their first drive with Tucker Gleason, their backup starting tonight. So it's Scott Leffler in Bowling Green preparing most of the week for Finn, but now dealing with a new quarterback. Yeah, and I love Scott Leffler. I think he's one of the great offensive lines in the game. He's, you know, he's really helped build this program back. And I feel, I feel like you know this year is better than last year, and which is better than the previous year. Things are going the right direction. Well, defense coming to play tonight. So you had DJ Taylor make a couple of plays like that on the first drive, and this time Brooks from that first level. And Carl Brooks, again, another one of the best defensive line in the back. Tied for 10th in the nation in sacks with eight. He's a guy you, want to, you might want to block. Now, he's playing some end. He'll play some tackle, probably in the pros, which I think he's definitely an NFL guy. Probably a three technique or four technique at 300 pounds, but you can see he can move. Bowling Green staff has said that that's who they come to see. That's who the NFL guys are coming to see. Pressure on Gleason again. He's going down again. Ball almost came out, but he held on to it, and it'll be fourth down. Jordan Anderson up from safety made the sack. Tell him don't sleep on this Bowling Green defensive front. Scott Leffler likes what he sees. Some pressure off the edge. The linebacker up the middle was able to do the block out of the way. It's a good start. Now they got to give the ball back to this offense, and it's got to get something rolling here. There's two nice opening drives by that D. And a short punt will give McDonald and the Bowling Green offense good field position inside the Toledo 40-yard line. The Bowling Green looking for the game's first score in the opening. Candle, the head coach for Toledo. He's been a part of a lot of these battle for I-75 games. First as an assistant. Now is the seventh year head coach at Toledo, and he's had a little bit of success. I'd say he's 11 and 2 in these games. Yeah, I was going to say, he's done a good job. You mentioned his seventh season, which I can't believe. I still remember him being here with Matt Campbell, but you know, he's done a great job. Obviously, he won the Mac back in 2017. And we talked to him here this week. He said this, this team this year reminds him of that team just from a leadership and a commitment to being the best kind of standpoint. Kind of felt like manifesting, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it reminds him of 2017 when they went to Detroit and won. Yep. Like you said, he was an assistant for Matt Campbell before. He said his favorite Bowling Green Toledo game was 2013. It was Terrence Owens to Alonzo Russell with a minute left to win it on fourth and goal for Toledo. So Bowling Green with their second drive, and McDonald has it knocked down. Good job by that Toledo front getting a hand up here. Jamal Hines knocked her down. It's another potential NFL guy. And a lot of them on this field here tonight. Especially in the front seven for yeah. Toledo. 
Yeah, they got some dudes. I mean, a couple linebackers, Deontay Johnson, Dallas Gant will be mentioning their names a bunch tonight as well. Here we go, some formational switches. Well, it's usually around the tight ends, too. And you got the backup, Orth, in the game at quarterback. And he takes off and has a good game for a first down. Camden Orth, who they said they were going to change things up with tonight, outside of McDonald, and a good first start. And, and you can see why they're going to put him in the game and use him tonight. He's a big guy, 6'3", 230. And they get some formation, and hey, what do we line up? And boom, that ball is snapped to Orth, and he has a nice gain around the right side. Tough runner. So Toledo's without their quarterback. Bowling Green has an extra quarterback. <laughs> Camden North playing tonight. We got Orth in there again after his gain of 13 yards on second down. And with the snow falling, a little bit damp, it's going to be hard to throw it. So Orth sticks oh it in boy. there, and he's got no gain. The ball comes out. And Bowling Green is back on top of it. And one thing you notice is, is a lot of the, the motions and the shifts and things. And what that does, Connor, to a defense, it just makes you hesitant to where your gap is, right? Things are happening, moving around. And in this play, they just snap it to Worth, and he, that ball is out. And fortunately for Scott Leffler and company, they jump on it. And Bronson Warner got it back. So one good play, one near disastrous play for Orth. McDonald comes back in at quarterback. We have the second and ten. Off of the play fake. McDonald going for the end zone. And that's caught. It's a touchdown to Hilaire. McDonald sits out two plays, then throws one right on the money from 25 yards out. We talk about Matt McDonald, how comfortable he is in this offense. How about this? Throwing the ball into double coverage, but he's confident with it. Look at this. I mean, that's a great job. And that's in between two blue jerseys. And look at this catch. That ball is hanging up in this night sky with the snow coming down. And Hilaire makes a fantastic catch to put Bowling Green on the board. Hilaire's fifth of the year. And on a two-quarterback drive, that's fourth on the ground. Then McDonald right back through the air to hit Hilaire. That was a great job by Bowling Green, keeping this defense off balance, some motion, some shifts, a couple of different quarterbacks. But in crunch time, Matt McDonald comes in and makes a beautiful throw. Bowling Green on. Back in Toledo, where Bowling Green scores on their second drive. Lead at 7 zip on the Odu Hilaire touchdown on chilly night off of the river. Rain falling, rain slash snow. <laughs> yeah. Wintry mix. It's not, it's not pretty out there, but I'll tell you what. Really like how Bowling Green has come out early in this football game and established that they've come here to play. And what a catch through those conditions. You're oh, talking man. about that right through the break from yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely. That ball is hanging up in the sky and snow coming down. He finds that thing and hauls it in. And through double coverage where the grip might be an issue for a quarterback. 25-yard hit gets Bowling Green on the board. And they lead a game where Toledo is favored. And fair catch will bring this out. Forward Tucker Gleason hey, coming up this weekend. Our Sunday NFL Countdown crew gets you ready for Week 11. That starts at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 7 Pacific. Then Monday Night Countdown before 49ers Cardinals in Mexico City, both on the ESPN app. A lot of Bengals fans, a lot of Browns oh, fans yep. in this area. Bengals are a game out of first. Be some talk about that rematch with Pittsburgh in Week One. Oh man, that was the start of the season off bad for the Bengals, and now. I mean, just as the Bengals are coming out of the bye, the Steelers are found their run game. They ran for, I think, over close to 200 yards against the Saints last week. T.J. Watts back, so here we go. Come on. There's a Browns fan here at the game tonight <laughs> wearing, a, wearing a ski cap. Just wear those the rest of the week until <laughs> they play in Buffalo on Sunday. A run starts the third drive for Toledo, and that's going nowhere. Jacquez Stewart has had no running room to begin this game. DJ Taylor has gotten three times already. This Toledo offense is flat. I mean, let's call it what it is. I mean, I mean, Bowling Green is just kind of having his way. They're flying around, shooting gaps, and, and attacking. And now this Toledo offense has no answer. Well, Taylor's in the backfield every play, it seems hey, like. DJ Taylor's. Having a fantastic game so far. 
couple of negative plays because of him. Toledo has no positive yardage yet. Now they do. And they get it out to the edge for Newton. And he's tackled just shy of the 30-yard line. He third down. I think that's what Toledo wants to do. If they can protect and keep this front at bay, I think there's some opportunities on the outside and the back end. That's not the strength of Bowling Green's defense, their secondary. So give him Tucker Gleason some time and let him find some wide receivers and move this ball down the field. As DJ Taylor has shown, the strength is in the front seven. A uh, quick hit out for Stewart, and he loses his feet across the 30-yard line. Chris Bacon, the leading tackler, stopped in four yards at the line of game. Chris Bacon, good player, Georgia State transfer. And again, here we go, another three and out. Okay, I, can't, I can't tell you how many minutes I spent this week trying to figure out what Chris Bacon's middle name is. <laughs> I was hoping it was Patrick. <laughs> It'd be crispy bacon. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Not to be. The, the digging came up empty. But a good play for Bacon to get the ball back. To Bowling Green, and that's three consecutive three and outs for that BJ defense. Yeah, they're, they're really, really active up front. And Scott Leffler, he, he alluded to it this week when we talked to him. He said, "Look, you know, we, we got a, a ton to play for tonight. We, we win, we still keep ourselves in the mix here." Our defense has got to play well, got to start off well. And right now, this offense, they can put together a scoring drive like they did last time. This will be a really, really good start for them. Remember, it was two quarterbacks last drive. McDonald came back in and threw the touchdown to Hilaire. And it's McDonald that starts this drive at quarterback. And he's looking deep down the field and throws deep down the field. He's got Hilaire again! They connected for the touchdown, and now the deep ball inside the 20. Matt McDonald and Bowling Green are not scared of this Toledo secondary. I mean, this is Chris McDonald. He's one of the best cornerbacks in the MAC, and Hilaire just runs right past him. McDonald gets paralyzed a bit, and the throw is on the money. I love how Bowling Green is coming out. They're not being cautious. They are attacking downfield. They hit for 25 for the touchdown. They double it on that play and get 50. Set up their first red zone trip of the night. Jason Patterson bangs it in there at second down. It's one of those deals where I think with how good this Toledo front is, if they can pass the ball well, I think that might open some things up for the run game, especially down this area of the field. But this has been a bit of a tough go for Bowling Green when they've gotten in the red zone this season, Rob. It, it, it has. You know, I think part of that is, you know, their, their run game is 116th in the nation. This is the area of the field, Connor, where you've got to be able to run the, run the ball when the defense knows you're running the ball. Still got to be able to do it. Watch this. A direct snap to their tight end playing tailback. It's Fannin off a couple of tackles. He's got a first down inside the five. One of the best freshmen that has played at Bowling Green in a long time, taking a couple of Toledo guys for a ride. How about that? A freshman tight end. Is this a wildcat? I don't know what you call it when the tight end comes in at quarterback. But either way, all these changes and different players lining up here and there in formations, it really has this Toledo defense being reactive right now. Scott Leffler and company taking it to him. Wild Phantom. That's what you call it. Phantom <laughs> taking the snap. So more movement with personnel. It's Orth back in the game at quarterback. The backup to McDonald. Played on that last drive. He fakes the screen. And Johnson the first to get him. And he is slammed down. Deswan Johnson. If he doesn't come knifing through and make that play, I, th I think Orth gets some yard. Look at this. Just fights off a block. You can see why he's one of the best players out there. Andre Fuller came in to clean him off. But it was Johnson that made the initial play that allowed Fuller to come up and get him. Another guy from Florida coming up on a cold night. Here's Fannin again, who just had that first down run. And he gets Bowling Green at third down and three yards. And goal to go talked about Scott Leffler liking the tight ends. He never saw a tight end he didn't like. Kind of like John Gruden, who loves every quarterback. 
Nick Leffler likes all his tight ends, especially number 44, Harold Fanning. Fantastic athlete, and I like this package they have set up for him here. But now look at this, a bunch formation, lots of tight ends in the game. Creating a lot of gaps up front there. And McDonald back in at quarterback. He fakes the give, throws to the edge, and he's got his second touchdown. Andrew Bench for six. Love it. Bringing a different personnel group. You get everybody packed inside that phone booth, Connor, and then boom, in you blast out. Get a couple of natural picks there. Toledo thinks they might be trying to just power run that thing in because they've done that the last couple of times with, with Fannin and running back. And then you get the play action pass to the tight end. Fantastic. That was a tight end to drive. <laughs> I'm telling you, he loves the tight ends. <laughs> you start calling Bowling Green tight end you. Tight end you. That's right. And Andrew Bench with his second of the year. He caught a touchdown against Akron earlier. That was in the beginning of Mac play. Now deep into the season, Bench on the board again. And he's just giving them some. you got two different quarterbacks. you got a tight end lining up at Wildcat. And the defense, his heads are spinning out there. And then you get everybody packed down in tight, and then they explode out. And Bench just finds his, you know, no one sees him. McDonald put it on the money. Great. Uh, Toledo, the big favorite coming in, winning the MAC West. Bowling Green still alive in the East. But Bowling Green having no problems moving the ball through the air on a night where it's hard to get a grip. Yeah, and on a defense that, you know, we talked about their how good Toledo's front is. Their back end is, is really, really good. They play some great pass defense. But, again, I, I like the fact that Scott Leffler in this offense is not coming out scared. They're not being cautious. They know if they want to come in and beat this team, and as I said, probably the most talented team in the MAC, they got to go at it. They got to attack. They can't sit back and, and react. It was a, uh, a toughness row of the bleachers that we just saw. Shirts have come off in the Bowling Green section. Yeah. Touchdown poker, I think that's what was going on. <laughs> so Stewart gets another chance to return it. He's got a seam this time, switching hands, and he's taken down by the kicker outside the 45-yard line. But there are two flags down right where that broke. And that's the other side of the attire tonight. Jacket, sweatshirt. Probably Long John's underneath. Yeah, there was a time, Connor, when I'd be the guy with the short sleeves out there trying to act tough, not nine. Wow. And Toledo just can't get any momentum going. I was just getting ready to say, you know, what? one of the easiest ways to get some momentum back on your side is a big play on special teams, right? So you get the good return, and Penley's going to wipe most of it out. And just seven yards for Toledo as they go into their fourth touch of the ball. This means so much, just beyond the standings, but you got some iconic rivalries on this list, including one in the MAC in this state in Akron and Kent State. But anybody that grows up in the state is aware of the battle for I-75. Sometimes it makes you make interesting choices dress-wise, <laughs> but it means a ton. It's a rivalry game, Connor. No holds barred. There's Gleason and his first big play through the passing game. He's got a first down to Blankemsee. And he was a guy that was targeted a couple of times last week, but still working back from injury. He gets 20. Good job by Tucker Gleason. And they need a big play to get some momentum going. And I like this too. Get back up on the line and get some tempo, snap this ball again. And he hands it off to Kelly, who climbs his way up toward the 40 yard line. So maybe that's the play out to Blankemsee that gets Tucker Gleason in this offense going. It's just up to somebody on Toledo right now to, to make a big play. Create some spark, create some energy. It's a cold night, you know. We're in, into November here. And got it going through the air. Still trying to get it going on the ground because of DJ Taylor cleaning everything up in the backfield from linebacker. Negative rush yard so far. Gleason gets hit as he throws, and that ball's knocked down. Oh, and it was almost Taylor that intercepted it. So Taylor had a couple of TFLs, almost came up with a pick, but the pressure was what caused it. Yeah, pressure right up the gut there. He has Demetrius Hardeman 
Rudy not going to sit back and allow Tucker Gleason to be comfortable. We talked about how their offense is attacking. This defensive front is attacking as well. Hardeman, a third of his tackles this year are sacks. Almost half of them have come in the backfield. This came up with the seventh sack to set up third and five. The pressure. And Gleason gets it away and just throws it away. They are coming right now up the gut from Bowling Green. Tucker Gleason looks all out of sorts. I, I like what he did on that first play. was calm. Pretty nice pass, but after that, he just looks... I mean, look at, look at Carl Brooks down there, swatting, swimming, getting the quarterback. They bring the linebacker up the middle there. And, and, you know, that's one thing you do against a quarterback that doesn't have a lot of experience, isn't getting a ton of the reps in practice. Bring some pressure on him. Don't let him sit back there and pick you apart. So Bowling Green getting it back, already up by two scores. We've talked about what this game means for Bowling Green and how they need to stay alive in the MAC East race to get to Detroit for the title game, but... Toledo sure doesn't want to go in on a loss or two into Detroit. They want to go in feeling good. They, they, they don't, but, you know, human nature is what it is, right? You know, in their minds, they, they get all that, but there's a part of you that says, well, you know, if you win or lose tonight, well, we're still in the same boat, so that can maybe cause you to let your foot off the gas. But I know Jason Candle and company say, look, yeah, we want to keep this momentum going. We need to build and get better heading into that championship game, and I think it's up to this team. If they're a real champion, we can find a way to do that tonight. And more success through the air for McDonald, complete to C.J. Lewis. Uh, McDonald on target one more time. He's been sharp to start this game. And again, lots of rhythm. Matt McDonald is not sitting back there holding on to the football. Remember early in his career, you saw him do that a lot, right? Sitting back there holding it, waiting on this. He just knows the progressions, right? Boom, one, two, three. He can get through, and that ball is out of his hand. It's going to be a very interesting rocket. Bowling Green gets him back for another year. We'll have to fight the NCAA on it. But you can see more of this. Out to Lewis again. Back-to-back uh, -back completions to C.J. Lewis. And when he's protected, when he's got the guys up front, Matt McDonald, he can do a lot of that, spread it around to a lot of different receivers. He can spread it around, but also with, with them being able to complete some of those deep passes, it has that secondary for Toledo for waiting back, and that's created some opportunities underneath like we saw in that last play. We've seen all the tight ends, an extension of that offensive line, and McDonald has completed it to four different guys tonight. And has it complete on this drive to just two guys. And make that five on the night. What complete to Teron Keith as running back. Yeah, Scott Leffler and company are going to empty that playbook out here a little bit. That thing is pretty fit. He's, he's been around a long time, around a lot of great quarterbacks, I'm sure. There's no limit to how many plays he's drawn up, and he may, we may see a lot of them tonight. Look at how big that sheet is. <laughs> That's a pretty big one. Here's Mike Leach's. It's like the size of like a tiny note card. He's just like, you know, on, on, raid. Just It's up to the receivers to figure it out. We'll throw you the ball. Yeah, on the spectrum of Mike Leach, <laughs> Jimbo Fisher. That's more Jimbo Fisher than Correct. it is Mike Leach. Correct. So he hit the end of the first 15 minutes, and it's Bowling Green trying to keep their season alive with that big menu of plays through the air two times for Matt McDonald. First two is Hilaire through the snow, and then on a drive that saw all tight ends, Andrew Bench closed out. Look, it's not about how happy you look to be here tonight. It is about <laughs> being here tonight. This oh, is the ideal, guys, this is the ideal day. You go to you go the Battle of I-75. Don't get a better night. Yeah, these guys are loving it. Ohio guys. Uh, bowling to the touchdown lead through the first quarter as Patterson sets up third down and short for Bowling Green. But uh, the student crowd for Toledo, the crowd overall, especially for this late in the year and the weather that we got late today, really, really good. I mean, this is fantastic. This is a great crowd. He's already thrown for two touchdown passes tonight. Into the air on third down and three here, maybe. Nope, he's not going to get it off. And right up the middle, Johnson was surging up the line of scrimmage again. Which is a two-person route. They kept the match protected. But you, you can see Deswan Johnson just fighting up there, spinning out of there, getting in on things. I mean, it's just, you know, four guys, two, two guys, 
it creates a lot of havoc down there. We had the conversation, how, t how motivated would Toledo be? They've already clinched. Don't tell Deswan Johnson that. No, he, he's out there playing hard. It's his offense. I mean, the defense is doing okay. I, I think Bowling Green is just has a great game plan so far. It's up to this offense to inject some energy back in this team. And this play blown dead before the punt. This was fourth and four. Play clock at zero. And it will be the delay of game. Interesting, right? You're near midfield, Bowling Green last week. They went for it on fourth down six times with a two score lead. They decided to punt here. Well, that's because they went over six last week. That may, that may have something Could to do with it. Could have stopped there. Yeah, four. Fourth down didn't work out so well for them, but uh, look, I, I still think they'll be aggressive. I mean, fourth and five, well, now fourth and nine from, from this part of the field. Uh, analytics, you know, I, I get all that deal, but well, Sammy Sir has one that skips up at the 30, and Toledo's offense will come back out for the first time in the second quarter, trying to get it going. Down by two scores from the Glass City in Toledo, Ohio. Cold battle for I-75 in Toledo. Bowling Green through the first quarter plus, leading by two scores. Con Runyon with Rocky Boyman at the last. Coming up on Monday night, the NFL back in Mexico City for the first time since 2019. Week 11, Monday Night Football, 49ers and Cardinals, 8 Eastern with a kick on ESPN. Coverage starts with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern on ESPN and the app. A look at Kareem, Toledo Rocket, great running back in the house tonight along with several thousands, everybody in the county, coming out for the Battle of I-75. Toledo ball, Tucker Gleason is sacked one more time. And it's Brooks that got to him, moving up to third in Bowling Green history with that sack. Tell you what, I mean, it's, it's Johnson on the Toledo side, Carl Brooks on this side, just a sweet inside move. Just fakes to the outside, comes in, slaps the hands away. I mean, that is textbook stuff. Got to rush the passer. Get those offensive linemen's hands off you. Relentless to the ball. So, number 26 in his career, up to third all time. And Gleason's off target. And it'll be third down and 14. So with his offensive line right now, for Toledo, not playing well. So bowling career sack leaders. Carl Brooks having himself a night. This season alone, he's top 10 in the country in sacks. That's his ninth already, so a lot of that work, a lot of that breakout that he's had has come this season. It has, and, and look, everybody in the MAC knows who Carl Brooks is, and he's still productive this year despite getting a lot of double teams. Now they get to him again. Gleason sacked for the second time on the drive, and it's Carl Brooks with help from Walter Hare. It, this is where he missed Daquan Finn, right? Because he can just kind of take off and run. But you get the nice pass rush move on the side by Bryce Brown, and then just a whole host of Falcons come in there. Like you said, Hare, Carl Brooks. This Bowling Green defensive front came to play. Look at this. And a special teams play. Ball's free inside the five. And Bowling Green's on top of it for the touchdown. All Falcons at the Glass Bowl. Their third block punt of the year. And Toledo is absolutely shell-shocked right now. Offense is playing really poor, and then, you know, I, you got to give a lot of credit to Scott Leffler and company keeping the foot on the gas. You're up 14 to nothing. There's no time to get conservative. Stay on the attack. And you draw up a block on special teams and get it. It was Patrick Day that eventually gets into the end zone, but the pressure just keeps coming, even on special teams from Carl Brooks. Scott Leffler, love how aggressive he's being tonight. Defense playing well. The offense is the play. Carl Brooks show so far for Bowling Green. Blocked punt after a drive that had two sacks 
from the guy they call the heart of the Falcons up front on defense. What's the oldest cliche in football? Big time players make big time plays in big time games, right? Season on the line, fighting for their lives. It's still a chance to clinch the E. And your best defensive player is showing out. Carl Brooks, TFLs, two and a half of those, one and a half sacks, block punt. Is in on that? I'd, I'd raise you one cliche with it's a game of inches. <laughs> It's also a game of, of momentum and want to. And right now, Toledo doesn't seem to have that. I, I, I talk about it. I mean, it's human nature to say, hey, you know, it's cold. Why are we out here? We can't really go up or down in the max standings whether we win or lose tonight. And, and I think that that creeps into your head. And it's up to someone on this Toledo team to zap them out of it or this thing is going to get away from them big time. It looked like it was going to come on the return last time, but got called back on a holding. They get out to the 45-yard line. This time a fair catch, but Brooks on that last drive did everything for Bowling Green. Yeah, he's been fantastic. I mean, he's getting off of blocks. You know, it's good pass rush moves, swimming, getting to the inside. I mean, just causing havoc up there. And right now, I mean, Tucker Gleason is not comfortable in that pocket right now because of big number 11. He's a guy that stats-wise, Rocky, we were just talking about it, he broke out this year where the, the numbers really ballooned. But it was earlier than that that the staff felt broke out. Last year against Tennessee, Tucker Gleason has eight yards on first down, but he went up against an SEC offensive line, Carl Brooks last year, and he belonged. That yep. was the moment where Bowling Green knew he was going to be the force in the back. I still remember when Khalil Mack played for, for Buffalo in college and they had a great game against Ohio State and the world said, okay, why don't you start paying attention to this guy? Well, Brooks is on the sideline and now Toledo's moving the ball. And Stewart for a first down. There we go. Good Toledo, get back up on the line, snap the ball again. Force that momentum. Great job by Stewart here. Just get Mitchell Bird, wrap him around inside. Nice run. Now Gleason, trouble with the snap. And he gets out of the sack with a flag out and complete to the edge. Now to Newton. And a flag back near the quarterback for Gleason. Got out of the sack after the ball was snapped at his feet. Big Sujak, a referee. Sort this one out, longtime MAC official. I don't know if it was a face mask. Hit the quarterback in the head. I... First of all, before we get this, well, we're going to get it now. Maybe. Yeah. Good call, Rock. Yeah. And it was also another, almost another sack. Good job by Tucker Gleason staying alive because that ball's on the turf. Yeah, yeah, it is right there real quick, and that's all it takes. Jerk that thing around, Jordan Porter. Got the left side of that face mask and turned it around. So, three consecutive positive plays with Brooks on the sideline, so apparently he's that good. <laughs> However you can get him, right? Take a penalty here and get an extra 15 yards. Brooks, the defensive end, he had two sacks on the last drive. He has a tackle for a loss. And now he's back on the field by your screen at defensive end. But these big chunk plays have come without him on the field. And with him back in there, the big plays stop for Toledo. Stewart doesn't have much there. No, he's a second-time captain, Carl Brooks. Walter Hare, who plays on the other side of the defensive line for Brooks, said that even the other captains look up to Carl Brooks. Yeah. That's how much he's important on this Bowling Green yeah. team. He, he's the alpha, right? When, when, when he starts talking, everyone shuts up and <laughs> listens to what Carl Brooks has to say. Which is funny because Walter Hare talks more than Carl yes. Brooks. Yes, but Walter Hare loves when Carl Brooks is in the game because Carl Brooks gets a lot of double teams and Walter Hare has been very productive. Well, it opens things up for the other guys, too. Anthony Hawkins straight up the shoot. Anthony Hawkins, another big player, 6'2", 290, from Mansfield, Ohio. I'm telling you this front. 
active. You know, you, you can always tell when the defensive line's having a good game that you see offensive linemen turned looking back toward the quarterback. That means they're not blocking well. And now a lot of guys up in that line of scrimmage. Looks like they're going to bring some pressure on Tucker Gleason. It's that look on the offensive line of where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd my yeah. guy go? So right outside the red zone. This was the first red zone trip for Toledo. And Gleason fights his way back inside the 20. But it's going to be third down and nine. There's just nothing doing up that middle right now. And Chris Bacon to make the stick. Yeah, and I have to imagine this was just, hey, let's try to get a fairly comfortable field. Look at this. Jason from none too pleased. But come see the wide receiver. There's some banging going on inside there. This is this is not fun running into that front. 36-yard field goal try for Clucky. And through the elements, that is what left. So Jason Campbell already yet. Bowling Green giving their fans, their students, reason to stick around. A missed field goal for Clucky for Toledo going into that timeout. Keeps Toledo scoreless. Big favorite in this game, and they trail by 21. And, and you can tell Jason Cannon was just trying to get something positive here. Let's line up for a 36-yard field goal, get three on the board, and move on. But it doesn't happen. So a blocked punt and two throwing touchdowns. And Hilaire had one of those touchdown catches, but just broke down shy of the 20-yard line. Good play by Max and Hook. So this is a, a play in three acts. Happy, happy, or I'm sorry, sad, sad, and then happy. <laughs> Other way around. Yeah, you, you can tell by the looks here how that went. Jason Cannon saying nothing is going right for us right now. But on the other side, Scott Leffler saying this is working out exactly how we plan. But, but let me say this. I think right now for Matt McDonald in this offense, you want to stay aggressive because that's what's working, but you also can ill afford a turnover at this point. They've had some turnover issues here and there. Don't want to force one and get both the ball and the momentum back to Toledo. That's all gone right these first two quarters, and there's the turnover. It's Johnson on the zone blitz. That defensive tackle. Whoa. Toledo's got it going now with their best player on defense. That, that was perfectly timed. I mean, because again, that, that's what you just absolutely can't have. He just does not see the linebacker come on in, and, and it's just, you know, and again, all the momentum now it goes back to Toledo. They're in great field position. They get, finally get something positive happen for them. And that's a guy, Deswan Johnson, that usually is in the face of the quarterback, not back in coverage, making picks. I, I know. I mean, I had to double check. I'm like, Deswan Johnson, he lined up at, he popped out of there on that blitz, got into the zone. Now it's up to Tucker Gleason. So Gleason to the air and incomplete. Kelly out in the flat. Deswan Johnson came to Toledo about 65 pounds lighter than he is right now. 6'3", 210 is what he weighed when he got to Toledo, the guy that just had the pick. When you hear 6'3", 210, what position do you think? You think you know, linebacker? You think you know, anything but defensive line, right? <laughs> He's, he can play D-line, linebacker, all of it. So maybe some of those hands from back then coming up big as Kelly gets clipped inside the tank. It's third down. Johnson picked it off, almost brought it back, and then Jamal Hines is getting into the skirmish there. See, that, that that's dangerous water you're treading in right there. You, you start touching the official. Yeah, that's never get him under control here. And that was the biggest play of the night, positively, for Toledo. 0 for 6 on third down. They can still get a first down. And you got to complete to Kelly. Dances his way inside the 5, and he does get that first down. Darren Anders stops the touchdown, but not the first down. And, and you can tell Tucker Gregg company, excuse me, Tucker Gleason, you know, they got to get that ball out of his hand, right? Good job, good quick pass to the flat. 
Well, it's going to be hard to replicate what McDonald did on that big 50-yard throw. Down this area of the field, Jamal Turner, the tight end. He's been the go-to guy in the red zone. You see him in the wing right there. He's bottom of the screen to the left with Penny Boone in it running back, and he gets snowed under. Penny Boone, the ball carrier. Boone's a guy they like down here, too. He is... 35 pounds heavier than any other running back they use. He is a big, big man. So you're thinking either inside runs, the boot. Also, again, watch it all turn. He goes back to that wing spot, coming back across, coming underneath, getting out into the flat. And it was down in this area that Boone and Turner clinched the division last week. Went down and scored with a minute left against Ball State to clinch the West. And Gleason looking at that wide side, and there's Turner, but incomplete. That's the guy you wanted. That's the guy Gleason wanted. He's the guy. He's got 20 catches on the season and seven touchdowns. <laughs> He's the one you got to watch. He's a nice target. 6'6, 245. And he had him too. It just this ball got away from Gleason. He just needed to be a little bit more horizontal than, than vertical. You give him a chance down there. He's six inches taller than the guy covering him. Yeah, just, just give him a shot. Give him a chance. He, he can jump. He can get that thing out of there. Six foot six. Gleason looking that side again. Pocket closes. Gleason to the end zone. He's in. Interception and touchdown for the Rockets. And that fighting going on again. You expect this in the rivalry game a little bit. And the flags are out. And Toledo's trying to get everybody back to the sideline after they finally score. But after the pick and the touchdown, we saw that. A great response by Tucker Gleason. He's not played well until that drive, but a good job tucking that thing and getting it in for a tough run for the touchdown. Looking right here, he sees that thing open up to the left. Good athleticism, pounding it in. And then, then you see some extracurricular things happening. There's Penny Boone. Demetrius Hardman's in there turning his back. I'm not doing any of this. That's usually how it works. I, I've been there. You, you throw a punch and then you throw your hand. I didn't, I didn't do it. Well, yeah, you did. We know, <laughs> we know you're guilty if somebody gets punched in the booth tonight. That's right. Then you're walking out. There's too many TV cameras out there anymore. Get away with that. So Bowling Green, who had everything going right, they give up the ball, they give up a touchdown, and now they give up penalty yardage. And both penalties go against them. And this is where Scott Leffler is up to him to rally his team and say, look, we cannot let our emotions get the best of us here. We're playing good football. Let's keep doing that. You, you can't let one bad play wreck your emotions and, and just let that ruin the rest of the night. This would be a big opportunity right here for Bowling Green to fix this. And Clucky is perfect on the PAT. They got it fixed part of the way. Absolutely. Now Toledo has finally got some something positive happening. They get the interception by Jeswan Johnson. Scampers down inside the 15-yard line and then Tucker Gleason says, hey, I'll take this thing myself. I want to get my team back. Statement Saturday, big day of college football on ABC and ESPN. Illinois into the big house. Michigan, one of four undefeateds. Ohio State, another one of those four undefeateds. They get Maryland on ABC at 3.30 Eastern. Miami at Clemson. Clemson still an outside shot. They'll try to win the ACC and get some help ahead of them in the college football playoff. And then Tennessee and South Carolina close it out at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Correction on the number Tennessee. for the unsportsmanlike conduct. It was number 10 on the defense. Went ahead. Charge timeout. Bowling Green, their first. Lost to Georgia. Yep. And then everybody's like, maybe their offense isn't that legit. Well, Hendon Hooker and Tennessee, they scored 66 points last Saturday. They're fine. Yeah, they're the number one scoring offense in the country still. And there's a little bit of style points to that. And I know some people were a bit miffed by they put 66 on them and kept going. But look, it's what it comes down to. Let's face it. This is what the committee reacts to. They look at stats, and they like to see some of those numbers. So that's what Tennessee is going to do. But, you know, they're, they're certainly in the mix for this thing. You see Hendon Hooker directing the band after, too. 
yeah. he's up on the stand yeah. directing the bands. By, by the way, I, I think Tennessee, because of their strength of schedule, could find you know there's a scenario where they could get in over either Michigan or, or uh, Ohio State. Whoever loses that game, I think you know, Tennessee could be in there. Now look at this. All right, I think we're going to have an onside kick. This is because of the two personal foul penalties I love in the end zone after the touchdown for Bowling Green. So Toledo will line up for the onside kick in plus territory. And Clucky bounces one that's free. And Bowling Green got back on top of it. <laughs> wow. I mean, the game turns big time. And, and, I mean, it's the obvious but great decision here to go with the onside kick. C.J. Lewis, starting wide receiver, got back on top of it on the hands team. Yeah, that was very fortunate. And right now, it's up to Matt McDonald, who's played a lot of football, right? He's a senior, and he's got to find a way to calm this thing down and get this offense back to moving things. And three straight positive plays for Toledo. And a short gain on first down for Patterson. Yeah, an interception for Deswan Johnson. A touchdown, and then Bowling Green with two personal foul penalties. You've got to stop the bleed. And, and, you know, things are getting real chippy. We saw all the penalties. Now after the play, there's a little shove. That could easily have been a penalty. You know, both these coaches got to get in their team's ear and say, look, we cannot have the extra after the play stuff. And Ordeth is back into the game at quarterback. He's the backup. They've used him to run tonight. He's got nowhere to run on that play. And Jan Mitchell in on the play. Deontay Johnson also in at linebacker. Also some help from Nate Givham. Such a fine line between being careful with the ball and being too cautious. You know, it is a very, very conservative drive. Well, this thing started out from here. Yes. Oh, aggressive oh, very last impressive. week. Yeah. They've split their third down tries. Big play looming with halftime coming in five minutes. After Toledo just scored for the first time. McDonald back in there. Pocket closes, but he gets out a good ball that's dropped. The reliable Christian Sims. Can't come up with the first down. Wow. Bad drop right there because now all of a sudden you get the first down, you move the chains, and you can take a deep breath and say, okay, we're, we're fine. Well, it doesn't happen. It's just these little things in football. It's not seeing a dropping defensive lineman and throwing an interception right in his lap. It's, it's a drop on third down. These things compile. Sims is the second favorite target of McDonald. He's a guy that has had you know, very, very good games, especially lately. Had six catches last week. But the drop gets it back to Toledo after the 45-yard punt. Carson Sims, all Matt tight end. You don't drop too many. So Gleason's coming back out, Rocky. The guy that started his career at Georgia Tech, transferred here to Toledo, and has been backing up Daquan Finn until the last couple of weeks. And I think that touchdown run did a lot for his confidence, right? You, you know, he kind of got his lather going up a little bit, got knocked around, was able to punch it in for the touchdown, and let's see if he can take some of that momentum and bring it into this drive. And hard to get a lather on a night like tonight. <laughs> That's right. 30 degrees, wintry mix, snowing most of this game. Gleason got him going for the first time after Toledo fell down 21 zip. After Gleason's touchdown, he hands off. Nothing there for Kelly. Oh, Hawkins with Darren Anders up the shoot. Devin Rogers, the center, just got run over. I mean, watch this. The, the quickness by this defensive line. And Anthony Hawkins is a 290-pound man. He just boom, shot the gap, and then Darren Anders came and finished him off. That's a great play by Anders. Yeah, guy's that big, not typically that fast, no. huh? Now Gleason over the top for Turner. And it's dropped on the pick by Chris Bacon. Almost came up with a turnover. Really good effort by Bacon. Laid out and tried to haul that thing in. It was a little overthrown by Gleason. Tell he'd like to have that one back a little bit. But a good job, too, by Anders. I mean, that's the mismatch they wanted, right? 
get your tight end, Jamal Turner, with his height on a linebacker. That's what the offense is designed to do. It just couldn't connect. Bacon had a pick a couple of weeks ago against Western Michigan. Nearly a second in short time. The incompletion has Toledo back behind the sticks on third down. Gleason steps up and run. He's got some space. He's got a first down. And he's across midfield. So Gleason with his legs these last two drives has the chains moving. And, and they rushed just four, Connor. And what that did, it just allowed for a little rush lane to open up. See, there it is, right in front of him. Defensive line just got a little bit too far upfield. It opened that thing up and a great job of the run by Gleason. Gleason with a clean pocket off target. And after his run of 21, they get new life on this drive, though. Look, I mean, Tucker Gleason obviously is not Daquan Finn. He's not that electric of a runner, but we've seen him when he's had to tonight make a couple nice runs. One was for the touchdown, and that was for picking up a big third down. Okay, so Daquan Finn, in our coaches' meetings this week, we were told he's the Lamar Jackson of the MAC. Yeah. Can you think on your feet here? Who's Tucker Gleason? Give me a few more series. I don't know yet. All right, we'll check back at halftime, maybe. Uh, Gleason out of another tackle. He's got a first down. Tucker Gleason making a case for being the Lamar of the MAC. <laughs> he took offense to me saying he's not as good a runner as Daquan Finn, but he looks great. And, and this is the difference right now. And, and what you're seeing is this Bowling Green defensive front has been attacking all day, right? Well, sometimes you, you, you use that attacking nature against them, right? Let them get upfield and then find a little crease and hit it. Gleason off the play fake, throws a dart, has it complete inside the five yard line. He had it over the middle to Thomas Cyros and it's first and goal. Gleason's in the groove right now, Connor. Looks really good. Making great decisions, when to run with it, and then a nice clutch pass. Brent Favre of the Mac. Maybe, yeah, there you go. I don't mean to steal your thunder if that's, <laughs> if that's where you're going to get by halftime. And Toledo looking for 14 unanswered. Kelly inside run, and he's torn down. Deshaun Jones sweeps in from cornerback and makes that play. It's Bowling Green front. It's just bringing it. That's Blaine Spires off the edge. Unblock and just hones that thing down, gets to him. Spires from Youngstown, Ohio, setting the edge there. A lot of in-state guys in this rivalry. Talked about the distance between the two schools, but guys that have known it for a long time making big plays tonight. Watch Turner down here. And Penny Boone sticks it in there. Nowhere to go for Boone. <laughs> And it's Hardeman at the bottom of the pile. So opposite outside linebackers making back-to-back -back plays for Bowling Green. This defensive front, we've talked about him all night. Played really well. Right now, I mean, last time this area of the field, it was Tucker Gleason kept it. And you like, you know, you like to think that's an option here. They're going to spread some of these wide receivers out, and maybe Tucker Gleason if he can't find an open receiver. Finds a little crease and runs it in. Gleason's got pressure to the pylon. Incomplete. Incomplete. It was Blankemsey trying to tiptoe along that back line but didn't get it down. I'm not sure if he was forced out or if he just kind of lost track of where he was, but he was. I mean, he, he's. Yeah, he was close, actually. His right foot is definitely in the white, but. As he comes down, yeah. He kind of snow coned it, too. Yeah. And Gleason thought touchdown. Brooks is making the call for the official. And Toledo takes a timeout before fourth and goal just before the half. 30 seconds in line. Remember, it was Blankemsey that Jason Candle was yelling at on the sideline. Yeah, they were off into it big time. Before yeah. that missed field goal. So Blankemsey almost had a big redemption play there. All right, so fourth and goal, you're at the five-yard line. One, do you go for it? Two, what's your call if you do? I, I think right now is an opportunity to go for it. I, I feel like the momentum has swung back in your favor in a chance to really stun 
this Bowling Green team here. This is the 10th play of the drive coming up. But, but, but I think what you do is, is you give a run pass option to Tucker Gleason. You know, and if you don't find anything open, allow him the opportunity to sneak that thing in. Seems like he's settled in pretty nice. He huh? really has. I mean, he came out, he looked a little shell-shocked, right? Like, out of the first three drives of the game. But I think his, his game has gone on. He's been banged around a little bit. Sometimes that just kind of gets you in the flow. He's performed well so far. We learned about an hour before the game that Daquan Finn, the normal starting quarterback for Toledo, who's their leading rusher and leading passer, would not be a go tonight, is not dressed. So Gleason leading the Toledo offense. We are out on fourth down. They pitch it to Kelly, climbing the back of his own guy for a touchdown. Great play call here by Mike Howell and Robin Wiener, the, the offensive coordinators. Shovel pass, you know, and with the way Tucker Gleason has been able to run, you can see that that defense starts to spread out. Nice block by Kendall Major, the right guard. Touchdown. Playing tonight. Yes, sir. <laughs> No blowout the other way, it appears. 21 for Bowling Green, the next 14 for Toledo. And, and this is where, if you're Toledo, you, you can start to prove you're one of the best teams in the MAC. You came out flat, you let the other team get a huge lead on you, but found a way to come back and make this game close. Just a seven-point ball game here heading into half. Last couple weeks have been good to Mike Kelly, by the way. He was the leading rusher against Ball State. And on a night where the running game was slow to get going, Gleason has opened some things up now for his running backs. He really has. He's been able to connect the pass game a little bit. He's run a few himself. And Mike Kelly, these guys gotten better as this season's gone on. And now it's up to that man right there. And Matt McDonald and see if he can get that interception out of his head and that last drive. It was a three and out. Wasn't helped by his tight end, Chris Sims, who had to drop. We got two timeouts here. We'll see if he can uh, see how they want to approach this drive. Short kick. Yeah, Clucky left it short of the goal line. So Embry has a chance to bring it out. There's a flag back down at the 30. Embry's got the kicker to beat. And he's got that sideline with the flag down at the 30 yard line. Embry thinks he has a touchdown, we'll see. Flag all the way back, 70 yards away from the end zone. And we'll sort that out. Likely coming back, though. And you got a flag right at the end of the run, too. And as Embry dove into the end zone, flag came out at the two-yard line. The first one all the way back at the 30. I don't know if they're, you know, calling like unsportsmanlike for him jumping in the end zone like that. No, but he had guys close to him, right? I, I thought so. Well, certainly enough where to make the case he was just trying to dive in there before anyone could get him. I'm throwing a sideline warning on the guys with the megaphones. <laughs> certainly. There are two live ball fouls on the play, both by the receiving team. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number eight, receiving team, that penalty was declined. That's his first. During the return, illegal blindside block, number 32, return team. The penalty is half the distance from the spot of the foul after enforcement, first and ten. So Jalen Embry thought he had a 97-yard touchdown. Instead, it comes all the way back. So we'll see you get a look at it here. I think the bottom left of your screen, you go blind side block. Oh, come on. That's shoulder to shoulder. And 22 saw him coming. That was not, come on, guys. I, 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 that's a shame. That's a bad call. What a shame. 
And that was Patrick Day who had the big special teams play earlier. He had the touchdown and the block punt. I, I can see if you're peeling back and you know you're totally he doesn't have a chance to an opportunity to see as a blocker. But, but he looked him up. He saw he was coming and was still able to get the block. I, I don't know what you're supposed to do right there. And Patterson with Toledo trying to rip the ball out. Hangs on to it at second down. Scott Leffler seeing the clock wind inside a minute. And now they stop it. Charge timeout, Toledo, number yeah, two. Toledo, the 30 takes seconds the timeout. So they're thinking maybe we can get the ball the back and get this game tied or at least get closer before seconds. half. They have one timeout. I, I, I guess right now they're they're feeling good, right? A lot of the momentum has shifted back to, to their side. Bowling Green has got to find a way to stop the bleeding here. Maybe getting into halftime here and getting settled down would be the best thing for him. Bowling Green led it 21 zip rock, but committed seven penalties in this first half. That's what you can't do. We talked about it in the open. It's the self inflicted mistakes that have hurt this team. You know, they had three turnovers last week. That was a huge factor in that game. And they were playing some great football, and then you get the interception, you've had the penalties, and it's, it happens that quick. Our thoughts in Charlottesville this week, the news overnight a couple of nights ago. Some of that at the half, also some of the Week 11 storylines, our big slate of games on Statement Saturday. It's coming up in a minute 06. Yeah, a lot of thoughts go to that Virginia program. That's just, just awful. Patterson bouncing to the outside, and down he goes. Bauer up to make the stick. And third down at the clock, stopping again. And this is a, a Toledo team. Toledo is taking their third and final timeout. 30 seconds in length. Please set the game clock to one minute, one second. Thank this, you. This is a Toledo team that can blitz you, and I don't mean in the way of sending pressure, but they were down 21 points against Kent State earlier yeah. in the season. Turn that around and won by 21 points. And, and that's what great teams do, right? They, they're, they're never out of it. You know, they've got a lot of talent, very experienced bunch, and they, they find ways to win. And they, they allow you as the other team to beat yourself to a degree, and then they take it to you. So they've been real impressed. I mean, Toledo was flat at the beginning of this game, and especially here at home. You know, they're undefeated at home here this season only happened once since 2004. They've gone undefeated. That was their last MAC title team in 2017. That was Logan Woodside at quarterback, Terry Swanson, 1,000-yard rusher at running back. Obviously a very good team, best in the MAC. Trying to get back to the top of the MAC this year. Already won the West. Down to score against Bowling Green. And more Patterson on this drive. Three straight runs. So Bowling Green plays it safe before halftime, leading by a score. Bleed this clock, clock down to about 20 seconds here. We've already seen a blocked punt in this game. It was from Bowling Green. So they got their third touchdown. Looks like Scott Leffler will take a timeout once the clock does wind down to zeros. Remember, we had that shot of Jason Candle, Toledo's head coach, just spitting mad. It was right about the time we saw that shot, the things turned. <laughs> it was. Maybe him getting all riled up has helped his team mentally get back in this thing. Bowling Green is taking timeout number two. It'll be a full timeout. It's probably a little TV director's bias from what Anthony Giassi, our director, has shown that that happened, then two big plays happened, but <laughs> could, could be part of it, right? That's right. So it'll be fourth down and 12 deep into Bowling Green's own territory. Uh, what do you, you what do you do here if you're Toledo? You send the house, try to get a block, you set up a return. I, I think right here you, you set up you, know, you set up a return, and you maybe have the opportunity for two shots in the end zone. And if you if you're thinking about field goal range for Clucky, his long on the year is 45. Now that's in better conditions than tonight. Correct. We've already seen a, a, a short punt. Is that Space Cowboy? Is that what that is? 
the, they're, they're the Rockets. They're wearing cowboy hats. You may have an opportunity for two plays, but it might be closer to one. You think about five seconds is what you need for a play. So I think we'll, we'll get this punt here and might get a chance for a decent return and then one shot. So we got ten guys up at the line of scrimmage. Now a couple bail out of there. We'll try to set up a return for Beal. He does take it. And gets out of the first tackle, but chopped down at the 40. And with five seconds, no timeouts, this probably has to be a shot to the end zone now. So there it is, one shot to the end zone. So Bowling Green got nine seconds off the clock. And with the backup quarterback, Tucker Gleason, starting tonight, I think that maybe that guy in the middle of the huddle. There it is, that's Jamal Turner. Turner, yeah. He's, who you might target. He, he's the tight end, six foot six. I'm Bowling Green. I'm, I'm finding out where number nine is, making sure I have a body on him. Of course, as soon as it, oh, there he is. Okay. Here comes Jamal Turner. And he's on the end of the line of scrimmage toward the bottom of your screen here. And there's the prevent defense. Four DBs back for Bowling Green. Roll the pocket for Gleason. Throw fast, and it's incomplete. So fast. But there's still time on the clock. Still two seconds on the clock. Interesting. And, and had he completed that, he would have got out of bounds and would have been, what, maybe a 47-yard field goal. So tried to go with a quick pass and pick up a couple yards. Yeah. Told you that Clucky has made. Taking their third final timeout, 30 seconds in length. Lucky, the kicker for Toledo, has made from 45 this year, but made a 50-yarder last year. So if they completed that, yeah, that's, that's, assuming, yeah. Yeah, that's a chance to try it. Bowling Green has burned their final timeout. Real interesting half, Rock. Very interesting. I mean, we I mean, talk about momentum swings. I mean, Bowling Green comes out and is just jumps all over Toledo, who looks flat. They look, they didn't have much energy. Everything on the side, and it's just fine. I mean, it usually is turnovers, right, that can swing momentum. Bowling Green's offense doing everything great, and then Matt McDonald throws the interception to Deswan Johnson. Toledo gets on the board, and ever since that moment, it, it's, the momentum has been on the side of the Rockets. Scott Leffler, if you lip read there, said something about three seconds, and I would I'd have to think that that's, how did that play only take three seconds? Uh, that's what I thought. I mean, you know, it's hard to get a one, one playoff in five seconds on anything left. This looks similar to that last play, but Gleason taking a shot this time. Three guys down there for Toledo, and that's intercepted. So Bowling Green intercepts it, and that brings an end to the half. And they do take the lead with Trent Sims hauling in the pick. And Bowling Green, perfect when leading at the half this year, stay in front of this rivalry game. Good job. You're boxing out, and then you got to high point that thing and come down with it. That was scarily close if you're Bowling Green. Close, to, yeah. to Newton. Really close. So Bowling Green on a snowy night at the Glass Bowl. And everything cooking. The first 21 to the Falcons. The next 14 to Tucker Gleason and Toledo. And the Rockets, champions of the West, trying to eliminate Bowling Green from the East. Across the country, businesses have had to adjust how they operate and make difficult decisions to protect their employees, customers, and communities. While we don't yet fully know where this road will lead, we do know you don't have to walk it alone. When you're ready, Cox Media's team of experts will be here to offer thoughtful perspective on messaging and media planning as your customers are evolving how they watch, read, and connect. We're here to help you navigate this together. Cox Media. For here. We're still going to go... He's playing the championship game, but I think they may have snapped out of that line of thinking here behind some good plays. And Toledo has won all of the last 12 meetings except 2019. That was Scott Leffler's first season. And four seasons into this, leading at halftime is a big deal. Remember what he told us this week? We got to get this game to the second half. We feel like we got a chance. And well, they're, they're there. It's just them getting the momentum back here. And he's got the hat back on now. 
went into the locker room with wet hair, put the hat on at the half with uh, his team up seven points. They're going to get the ball first. They deferred the opening kick. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's tough being a coach, right? I mean, early on, everything goes right. You're like, wow, here we are. And then and how quickly things can change. And one thing Scott Leffer knows is this Toledo ball club is a really good team behind a really good coach by the man right there, Jason Campbell. And he knows it's going to be a four-quarter football game. Probably the lead candidate for coach of the year in the Mid-American Conference, clinching with two weeks left. You saw Scott Leffler put a hat on at halftime. Jason Campbell also layered up with a uh, Usually we're on uniform watch, we're on coach jacket <laughs> slash hat watch. <laughs> the tempers are dropping a little bit as this game goes on. So Bowling Green led it 21-0. They get the ball first to start the second half. And Nick Mosley up the sideline, and he's jolted out with a flag down at the 30-yard line. Shoved out of the 32. Right behind the end of that play, a flag came out. Turn to return, holding. Number 30, return speed. 10-yard penalty from the spot. Foul after enforcement. First and 10. There's a, I have no data to back this up, but there's a penalty on at least 50% of kicking plays. Happens all the time. It's like they want to eliminate the, the kicking game, but you see the quarterback comparison here. Tucker Gleason was, was very slow to get going, but then he really amped things up. And Matt McDonald was, has been pretty efficient, really the one bad play he had was that interception. Well, Bowling Green used two quarterbacks in the first half. They used both Orth and McDonald. And they started the ground with Jason Patterson in the second half. And what characterized Bowling Green's offense early, especially in that first half, was they were aggressive. It was downfield shots, and I think that really loosened up that secondary. Then they were having some luck in that short intermediate range as well. Well, there's still some light snow falling, but not quite as rapidly as early in the game. There's another downfield shot. Hilaire behind the defense, and he slides down at the 20. Love it. Love it. Don't get conservative. Being aggressive is what got you the lead early in this football game. Go back to it. Great pocket here. And, and again, we've talked about it. This is one of the best secondaries in the mat. That's Quinion Mitchell. He is a, one of the best cornerbacks. And Hilaire gets by him for a nice little catch. Second play between McDonald and Hilaire for 50 plus yards tonight. Went for 50 in the first half. That one for 55. And Hilaire over 100 yards. And a wobbling pass is almost brought down. Sims with Mitchell in coverage. Almost had the catch of the night. Down got a little bit of pressure off to his left side. It's almost like Sims mistimed his jump. I, I think if he times that jump better, it, it's actually in a good spot up high where your six foot four tight end can grab it. Uh, Mitchell gets one back after he was beat by Hilaire, but now has to come out. Going up against a bigger target. So without the best cornerback on the field, back to the air, and a batted ball is incomplete. And Bauer was bearing down on the tip. Almost came up with the second pick for Toledo. Uh, it looked like McDonald, it looked like he was so open, he just kind of just, almost like he didn't want to make a mistake, but he almost threw it too high. That was very dangerous. Well, that was shot put ish Yeah, that uh, was you know, just rip that thing, right? throw, it, throw it in there. So third and ten after the big play to Hilaire. Got Bowling Green on the doorstep of the red zone. Toledo wants to bring some pressure. They do. And McDonald gets it away just in time, but incomplete. Hilaire was breaking open. With the pressure there, Toledo forces fourth down. Yeah, the pressure was just enough to get Matt McDonald a little bit unsettled. Let's watch this route. Great release off the ball, and then the nod back to the outside. He, he's open. That's a very good route run there by Hilaire. Just couldn't connect. 
So it sets up a 39-yard field goal try for Bowling Green with Mason Lawler. This is inside his season long of 45. And to make it a two-score game, Lawler splits him. So it was Hilaire's big play. Scott Leffler being aggressive coming out of halftime in Bowling Green. This is how November football should look. <laughs> Rain, snow, 30 degrees. Nobody's gone home, though. No, this is, um, we talked about it earlier. This is a fantastic crowd here on this rivalry game. Fans have showed out despite the weather. And, and they've got their money's worth, right? This is a great football game. Well, student crowd, very active for Toledo. Yeah, I think for Toledo, it was in Toledo fans. It was right about that point where folks might have started heading to the door, but they're glad they did because this thing switched. The momentum got back to Toledo. Great job by Bowling Green coming out here at the half and getting the field goal, but Toledo is certainly back in this football game. So the 39-yarder from Mason Lawler got Bowling Green back on the board, leading by two scores. And remember, Bowling Green scoreboard watching a little bit. It was 17-3 Ohio in Muncie over Ball State at the half. Ohio can clinch the East tonight. Okay, coming up on UFC Fight Night Saturday from the Apex in Las Vegas with our heavyweight main event. Derek Lewis takes on Sergey Spivak. Prelims start at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, followed by the main card at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific on ESPN Plus and the ESPN app. So that's what Derek Lewis has done. Figured you're not uh, walking down the alley against uh, him. I wouldn't step in the ring with that guy. Forget it. You, know, you were talking earlier about how you're throwing punches and then leaving the scrum, <laughs> blaming it on somebody else. <laughs> Definitely not taking on Derek Lewis. No. Micah Kelly starts the second half opening drive for Toledo with a five-yard run. He had the touchdown that made it 21-14 to before the break. And, and Gleason, as we talked about, really settled in, right? Shanky at first, finally got into the rhythm of this game. 8 of 19, 75 yards, had the touchdown, and also 8 rushes for 53. And Kelly squeezes through for a first down. Well, it started with Gleason on the ground. Kelly, Stewart, Penny Boone, those are the three main backs for Toledo. Not really anything there until Gleason sprung a couple runs. And I think their ability to run is, is what's helped them. This defensive front for Bowling Green is active. And Darren Anders chases down Micah Kelly there. And he was a little slow to get up. He's all right. It's happened a lot when Anders has hit people this year. You can see, see a little push here at the end. I'm surprised that wasn't called. Uh, Hawkins said sit down twice. Gleason's got a wide open receiver and he hits him. Big play downfield for Gleason. And a first down to Blankemsee for 31 yards. Blankemsee, I think, was in the doghouse of Jason Candle, but he steps up and makes a big play. Good job, please, and just staying alive, right? Stay alive, good things happen. You find a wide open wide receiver down the field for a big play. It's like you ran a hitch route at 30 yards. He said, hey, guy, throw it to me. I'm open. Sitting there waiting. <laughs> Biggest play of the night for Toledo. Followed up by a negative play. But... It's mostly been either Gleason on the grounds or run plays from Kelly that have gotten their chunk plays. I think this Bowling Green secondary has done a pretty good job of not letting things get over their head, and they've got to continue to do that. Now off of the play fake, Gleason has a man open, open over the middle, and it's Blankemsey losing the ball. He lost it inside the five, and Anderson on top of it. And Blankemsey down on the play. Lost the ball, got hit hard, and stays down. And I think it was Bacon that came across and delivered the hit that jarred the ball loose. The ruling on the field is of a catch, fumble, recovery by the defense. Fisher's timeout for an injured player. Oh, yeah. Bacon came in with but, the but shoulder. Did he establish himself as a runner where he wouldn't be a defenseless player? I, 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 his shoulder hit, hit, hit the, the helmet. 
And if he's a if he's a runner, if he he's no longer defenseless. It comes down to what they determine here. And Bacon with the shoulder to Blankemsey, and the ball comes out. Blankemsey is standing up. I, I mean, to, to me, it looked like he led with his shoulder. It did not look like the crown on the top of his helmet. Is what he led with. So he's a runner right there. But that, that's all shoulder. That's not helmet. Yeah. So, again, the difference is, is if he's determined to be, have caught the ball and established himself as a runner, he's no longer defenseless. It's good to see Blankemsey upstanding. Absolutely. Walked it off the field. And they're you know, going to have to go a long way to get back into the end zone. 98 yards after Blankemsey fumbles at the two-yard line. So McDonald in there at quarterback and an acrobatic non-catch along the sideline for Hilaire. And you saw the signal from Jason Candle wanted them to look at targeting. Yeah, but, but again, he, he's not a defenseless player. He caught the ball, established himself as a runner. The tackler did not use the crown, the top of his helmet. So that that that's you know a vicious hit, but not one that's that is illegal, not one that's forcible contact. We talked to Eric Lewis, the defensive coordinator for Bowling Green, asked him who the hardest hitter was, and he said Chris Bacon. Yeah. He said he's going to deliver a big hit. He, he does in most games. And with the play clock winding down, McDonald gets the snap off and tries to go out the back door, flagged down at the line of scrimmage. Will be third down and long, pending the marker. Holding number 77, offense. The penalty is declined. The result of the play, third down. Jalen Grant. It's third down. So Bowling Green took over on the turnover with Toledo driving it. I'm McDonald. I'm finding Hilaire. It's Hilaire at the top of the screen up there. And over 100 yards on the night. Hit him for 55 yards, last drive. He does look Hilaire's way, and he reaches for it and did not catch it, did not stay in bounds. Made the grab and went to Hilaire again like you were calling for, but incomplete fourth down. Yeah, I mean, he's made some fantastic catches. He's the guy you got to go to. I mean, this is close. This is a great job. I just cannot get the right foot in before he catches that thing. Man, still incredible concentration. He does a good job fumbling that thing around and then securing into his body as he turns. If he had landed in bounds, that would have been good. That's twice on that drive that yeah. he made acrobatic non-catches. <laughs> the touchdown he had earlier was great, too. He was staring up in the sky and found that thing over his shoulder. It's great. Not a short punt. Flag is down in the end zone where Sir kicked that. And this might be... A first down. Let's see if he, if he ran into the kicker. Let's see what variety is it. Did he rough him or did he run into him? And if nothing more for Bowling Green, they'll at least get a chance to get a better punt off. Be Correct. Toledo ball. Running into the kicker, number 15 on the receiving team. The five-yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot. Remains fourth down. It would have been Toledo ball at the 40-yard line, so they'll re-kick it. A little more space back up. A little more up. room. And makes it a little more comfortable. A little friendly fire in there, too. Yeah. Max and Hook pushing his own guy in. He's trying to hold his weight back. He said, come on, man. You, you shoved me into the kicker. <laughs> 
A little hip check. <laughs> My own guy. No way they fake it, right? This far deep? No. It'd be amazing if they did, though. You, you <laughs> called one earlier. I just wanted it on the phone. No, no. No fake. And Beal lets it go, so that's well, basically the difference of the penalty. Five less yards. For the head coach at Toledo. He was an assistant coach for Matt Campbell coming from Mount Union, a Division Three power here in the state of Ohio. And then he took over as the head job when Matt Campbell got the Iowa State head coaching job. First game in was pretty good. You go down to Florida, <laughs> you win a bowl game, and they keep going to bowl games since then. And then they won the MAC West and the MAC title in 2017, like they're trying to do again this season. Yeah, two years later, wins the conference title, beats Akron, an 11 and 2 record on the season. And Jason Candle said this week, he said, "This team we have this year reminds me of that team. You know, just of how they approach things, how they always want to get better, the leadership qualities." So. He thinks he has a shot here. They're already in the MAC title game. They want to try to win this thing, but they need to keep some momentum going as the season ends and get back in this game. Here. They're doing it with their second quarterback tonight. DJ Taylor makes the play near the line of scrimmage on Micah Kelly. But uh, going to a bowl game, they're already doing that. And they're uh, also going to the MAC title game, trying to dust it off for the first time since 2017. And Tucker Gleason throwing across wow. his body and has it complete to Kelly. How about that play falling away? Tucker Gleason is growing up before our eyes here. Was it, that, was, that was far flight, right? Yeah, it was. He's forced off to his left. A ton of pressure. Just, I mean, it, it just shows you in, in that moment for a quarterback, it's all instinctual. So you have to know where your guys are going to be, right? you got to know the offense and the scheme and and that's that thing fly. That was a good play. Toledo 30% on third down tonight. And Penny Boone, their power back, sticks his nose in there. Needed the 30 and met Darren Anders right at the 30. And they will move it for a first down. Once Penny Boone gets going, he's got some steam behind him. 235 pounds. That's a load. And then you know, they got three running backs. Micah Kelly, Jacquez Stewart. You know, they're, they're kind of the same guy, right? Penny Boone's a different guy. He's bigger, more of a bowling ball, getting those tough yards. And the transfer from Maryland. And Gleason gets hit. He throws an interception. Picked off by Deshaun Jones. And Bowling Green getting it back with Jones bowling his way across the 20-yard line. Good time for your first pick of the year. And Tucker Gleason was for, I mean, he was pressured and got hit and forced a bad throw. And there it was, it was Anders coming right up the pipe. A great job of a delayed blitz by Darren Anders. He creates the turnover. Deshaun Jones had three picks last year, was waiting on that first one. It's week 11. That's one thing this Bowling Green defense has done well. They come into this game with 19 takeaways. There's another one right there. And the third one they forced tonight. Solaire gets a couple yards on first down. With Deshaun Jones not only coming up with his first pick, big play in this rivalry game, he picks Bowling Green over Toledo. Yeah, yeah. He had an offer sitting there. Could have gone and played for the Rockets, but instead he's picking off passes against the Rockets. <laughs> and, and there's got to be a few guys where that pertains to in, in this game, right? Schools that are so close to one another, both programs. Done well in the past. Off the play fake, McDonald. Another shot over the middle. It's complete. And he's got a first down to Hilaire again. Already two plays of 50-plus tonight. And he's inside the 30-yard line. He might go for 300. Odu Hilaire. Another big gainer. He gets 48. I mean, Hilaire's been their best wide receiver, but this is a breakout performance by Hilaire. I mean, I'm super impressed with his ability to get open. Now, this was not a hard one to get over. He was, he was wide open in the middle of the field. But many times tonight, I mean, just great with the contested catches. Great high point in the ball, and 
That's an easy one. Just come up with it and let your legs do the rest. So Hilaire's got a catch in 33 straight games. He's obviously extended that streak by a lot. This is one for you, Mr. Notre Dame. Michael Mayer. Yeah, from Covington Catholic High School near me, yes. Has, has a streak of 34 straight games. So Hilaire is just behind one of the best tight ends and pass catchers in the country. It's good company to be in. That kid at Notre Dame is a great one. You haven't perked up like that all night until we <laughs> dropped that note on you. I always like watching Mayer. Second down and 10 for McDonald. Favorite target tonight has been Hilaire. And back across his body, incomplete. That was for Austin Osborne. And it's third down. Matt McDonald, he's not someone who's just going to take off and on the run. He's been on the run a lot. We talked about the offensive line play in front of him. And here's the deal on big third down here. Hilaire has come out of the game. He looks a little gassed here. You can understand he's run for almost 200 yards tonight. Six catches for 189. Hilaire off the field. It's Lewis and Osborne bottom of the screen. They throw back other side. And they've got it complete to Teron Keith. Looking for that first down and he's got it. Wow. And they get 11 on third down when they needed 10. A beautiful play call there. Everybody from on that Leo defense went with that fake as he rolls out to his right, and then you throw it back left. And then Keith just does the rest. So first time that Bowling Green and Scott Leffler have converted on a third down since the first quarter. And they raced out 21-0. So they find themselves back inside the red zone. Early in the game, we saw a lot of the direct snap to the tight ends. Wonder if we'll see that down this area of the field again. And Patterson running off his tight ends instead. Flag is in on the opposite side of where that play went. Illegal formation. Too many men in the backfield. Offense. Five-yard penalty remains. First down. And we've talked about how many different personnel groups and formations Bowling Green likes to use and that, that can be the downside of it you know you catch yourself sometimes with not enough on the line of scrimmage too many on the line of scrimmage Bowling Green I mean one of the biggest things for them tonight has been the penalties nine penalties for 85 yards it's really killed them it's still winning this game by 10 and driving McDonald back to the end zone drops Max and Hook over the top of Sims. Broke it up. Sims has missed a couple here tonight. He's very sure handy. He's an all Mac tight end. In a beautiful throw. He's right in the perfect spot where he just kind of turns around and he's got to be able to haul that one in. They had the big drop on third down and seven. Stopped the drive in the first half. Now, Hook, though, very good defender since he's been healthy. Missed the first three weeks of October. Hurt in the Central Michigan game. Has sealed the last two games for Toledo. Hilaire back in the game at the bottom of the screen. Guards first to timeout. Bowling Green, their first. And second and 15, Scott Leffler and Bowling Green driving just outside the red zone. Rock, it's interesting. They have basically like a, a three-person offensive coordinator dance going on in how they call the plays. Max Warner, who's pictured on the left, is a co-offensive coordinator with Coach Nozel on the right. But really, it all streams back through <laughs> Coach Leffler. It's his offense That's that they're running. That's right. And he's he's coached under Urban Meyer and Lloyd Carr and Jim Coletto and Steve Adazio. So he knows a thing or two about offense as well. Uh, there's a flag on somebody. Big time movement up front from Givehan. This be their 10th penalty. All start, number 53 Man. offense. Five yard penalty remains second down. Tunde Fatukasi, the left tackle. Bowling Green, they're pretty steady along the rest of their offensive line spots, but left tackle, Cameron Stewart and Fatukasi rotate. Okay, who's in there? This area of the field. Man, she cannot have these penalties. So second and 15 becomes second and 20. A drop in the end zone to penalties. 
Been a struggle for Bowling Green to try to put some distance between them and Toledo. And the pressure to the backside of McDonald. He escapes. And McDonald runs for it. Wow. <laughs> a great scramble by Matt McDonald there. I, I thought for a second he was going to throw this ball into coverage. He held on to it and scrambled off to his left. How did he get out of this give hand? I don't know. And right there, I thought he was getting ready to either throw one up for a pick or get a strip sack. He's able to come down with it. Scammers forward makes it, picks up a few yards here. All right, third down. We've got Hilaire coming to the bottom of the screen. Looks like he'll be matched up against Quinion Mitchell. I know you're hoping it goes that way. Good against good. Oh, Guy I love seeing these matchups. Nope. Ground game. Patterson. And just past the initial line of scrimmage, so fourth down. Looks like Leffler was content to just try to pick up a few yards and make an easier field goal here. Go up 13. Mason Lawler good from 39 the last time down the field. Try from 35, so a little bit shorter this time. Try to make it 13 for Bowling Green. And the Falcons, big underdogs coming in. To extend their double-digit lead with a 35-yard hit for Mason Lawler. And it's a good job. You, you need it. You had you start off that drive with a huge play downfield, and then you start a little bit, a few penalties. It's good to come out of that thing with something positive, even if it's just a field goal. We talked for Bowling Green, the MAC East race. They need some help from Ohio, who leads 19 to three at Ball State. Need Ohio to lose tonight, and then win out to set up a game with Ohio next week, with big implications to end the year. But of course, this would be a sixth win for Bowling Green. That, that, that's what I was just going to say that. You know, obviously they're still in the mix here should they win this game for the MAC East. But the biggest thing is they need that sixth win to become bowl eligible for the first time in seven years. It was 2015 before Scott Leffler got the job. Long ago, actually. Four years before he got the job. And Hilaire tonight, 189 yards on six catches. He made just some fantastic catches. You know, getting inside the defensive back and concentration. He is a true deep threat tonight. They, they have, he's been great all year, but I mean, this is another level that Hilaire has taken his game to. An angled kick and a fair catch for Toledo. Uh, with, with Hilaire, by the way, a couple of weeks ago, Matt McDonald, his quarterback, said, there's a guy we need to get the ball more. Yeah. You like you like a man of your word. He's uh, <laughs> he's given him an eight catch, a nine catch, and then this game tonight after that comment was made. And I think it all started with that first touchdown he had. A great catch over his shoulder, and that's kind of how it works. And, you know, you, you start making some big plays, guess what? They're going to keep getting the ball to you. And he's had a fantastic night. Six receptions, 184 yards, and a touchdown, very high night. Transfer from the SWAC, won a SWAC title at Alabama AM. And has been a, a big get for Bowling Green. And Matt McDonald the target. First play of this drive for Toledo Blown Dead. Delay of game, offense, and five yard penalty remains first down. You start a drive, too. Just the worst way to start a drive. Now you're down 13. Hey, let's get some positive going here, boys, and then you. That's something I'm sure Jason Cannon is not very pleased about. But look, I, I think it's it's up to this Toledo offensive line to hold off this BG defensive front. There's a flag down behind Gleason, and he connects for a big play. There's a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. Devin Maddox brings it in, but this is probably coming back. Uh, Maddox knows it there. Ten-yard penalty for the previous spot remains first down. Set offensive line. Well, holding happens. Roger so just does a good job just keeping coming there and just forces the hold. 
It is such an aggressive front. And they attack, they come at you. Nick Rossi called for it, the right tackle. Been some injuries for Toledo up front. Rossi's been the starter since week three. And nothing there with Brooks. Just right in the back of Micah Kelly. If there's a big play happening, most times it's big number 11, Carl Brooks. And his handwork is just fantastic. He's done it a few times tonight with an inside swipe. Just as his offensive linemen are bringing their hands out to get him on the brush plate there, bang, swipes him away. And then the quickness for a 300-pound man to get inside and make the play. And a guy that's being scouted probably will get drafted. We'll complete to Jamal Turner on second down and 28. And he's pushed out at the 25. Long way to go to get it for a first down and keep the drive going. And that swipe, that quickness for Brooks early in his career. Didn't always have this. Started getting on this play. Yeah, she boom, just just swiping those hands. And it's it's such a timing thing, you know. Just as soon as those hands for the offensive line come out, you feel where they are, where they're coming. Bang! Swipe them away and go to the quarterback. Well, pressure in the face of Gleason again, and he's wrapped down. Uh, Brooks was in there, didn't finish him off. It was Walter Hare, the other captain on that defensive line. Brooks lined up on the right side. See, they'll move him around. Then the swat, the swim. Is that Dwight Freeney? Come on. I mean, he's too big to be doing that. That's just great. I've had such a good time tonight watching Carl Brooks. Well, trouble with the snap, and they still get the punt away with Jonathan Batsky. And it dies at the 32-yard line. So... Indianapolis Colts, going with Jeff Saturday. He was there during the Dwight Freeney era. He's saying maybe the Colts draft <laughs> Carl Brooks. I don't know. I, I think any team that drafts Carl Brooks is going to get a great player. I mean, you, you don't often see a 293 pound guy with the, the swat and inside spin. This is the second time tonight they've had some issues punting here. Just Right in his hand, just drops it. And they are very fortunate to get this thing. I don't know how he got it, got it off. That's incredible. Uh, Batsky's very good punter. He had a 91-yard punt against Buffalo. Ooh. Somehow not a school record. Really? 92 is the record. Missed it by a yard. <laughs> so McDonald and the offense back out from Bowling Green. And they got it complete to Teron Keith. Got six on first down. Real quick, you mentioned Jeff Saturday. I played two seasons with Jeff Saturday with the Colts in 06 and 07. Proud of my former teammate for going in under impossible circumstances and getting the win. Just incredible. Think they're going to make the playoffs now? Make a run? Uh, you never know. Going that far? I, I, you can't figure out the AFC right now. There's Patterson. He's got a first down. Nice job there. Right? We've seen some big time passes here. And what that does, it loosens up the defense. And so what do you do? Bang, come back with that run game. First down, move those chains. And it's funny, it, in most of the season, that this offense hasn't been a big play offense, but they've gotten some big plays here tonight. And then they follow it up with some key runs. And that was the biggest run play of the night for Patterson, who's stuffed on this one. This is a shorthanded running back room for Bowling Green. Right before the season, they lost their projected top back, Terion Stewart, who's the, the career leader in yards per carry, out because of health and academic reasons. And, and that was a huge loss. If they have Terion Stewart, this, this is a, I mean, he changes the dynamic of this season. He is an electric football player. Shame he goes down with that injury. And Scott Leffler talked about how much that, that has changed that running back room. But they'll they, get him back next year. Yeah, they will, yeah. And every back that's in their top four in that room is a sophomore. Well, no room for McDonald to get that throw off. And Jamal Hines brings him down to make a third down. Check out this speed rush off the offense's right side by Jamal Hines. The speed and not sure what the top was doing right there. He just kind of just kept going back. He didn't come out and engage Hines. He got the quarterback. 
guy they nicknamed the man child. I think that's, I don't know if that's self proclaimed. He's got it in his Twitter bio. I know the Crimson Ice was near me in Cincinnati. Great player. And McDonald on third and 18, tucks it and spins out of the tackle. Flag down back behind the play. Looks like another penalty coming for Scott Leffler and Bowling Green. Heavy penalized night. It'll be a number 11. Holding, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains third down. This has been a problem, Rock, for Bowling Green in league games. They're last in the league in penalty yardage, meaning they have the most penalty yardage of any yeah, back team. And, and that's the thing, just, I mean, consistently throughout the season, the, this offense isn't explosive en enough to overcome the, those penalties. Now here we see Worf coming back in the game at quarterback. Saw him a few times in the first half. Big runner. Also had a nice touchdown pass as well. Max Warner, the offensive coordinator, said they would use him tonight. He's in to hand it off here. And it'll be punt time for Bowling Green after Deontay Johnson makes the tackle. We talked so much about Hines and Deswan Johnson up front for Toledo. Deontay Johnson might be their best player. He'll also be an NFL player. Absolutely. And Jason Kane will talk this week about you know, he's been the leader that's kind of held the whole team together early on. Tons of injuries they've had to overcome. You know, just the ups and downs of a season, you got to have that leader. That's Deontay Johnson. And Bowling Green will have to get the punt away before the quarter clock unwinds. And sir does. Fair catch for Beal. And one more play coming in the third. So Toledo, no points in this third quarter. They were down just a touchdown with everything going their way in that second quarter. But the big play for them in this quarter, Rock, was that fumble at the two-yard line. Yeah, huge play there. That, that, again, just swung the momentum back into Bowling Green's favor. But right now, Jason Cannell's talking that offensive line saying, look, let's give our quarterback Tucker Gleason some time because when he's had some time, he's been able to make some nice throws and there's Daquan Finn, who's, who's not playing in this game. The foot injury. He's a big part of their rushing game. Gleason has been at times tonight, but when Finn's in there, he's their top guy rushing. I still think there's an opportunity for Toledo to run this football. Slow down this rush. And they throw it, or tried to throw it on the final play of the quarter, and Gleason runs out of bounds and got hit late. But no flag comes out. All right, so that's the end of the quarter. That's the end of the and quarter. Toledo wanted the penalty on Oladokun, who shoved out Gleason. He said, where are my extra yards after that run? We'll flip fields in the snow at the Glass Bowl. Bowling Green looking for an upset win to get the bowl eligibility against their rival. Extra point made by participating schools. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Start of the fourth quarter and the battle for I-75. And Toledo ball down two scores and the pile moving on the first play of the fourth quarter with Penny Boone. That is what he does, Rock. He moving a, it for a first down. He is a pile mover, yes. Runs hard. Contact, 6'1", 235. The bulldozer back there. It's a first down. So he was at Maryland last year. And remember the great run Michigan State was on? They were in the college football picture. They went to Maryland, had some injuries. He was the lead back and played well against a really good defense. And this is Gleason out of the pocket and across midfield to make it second and short. And Gleason's scramble tonight has, has been very productive for Toledo. <laughs> It was his running that got him going when they're being shut out about a quarter and a half in. And, and again, with, with that defense, the front attacking so much, he got a tendency to get upfield, and that creates some open lanes, and he's taking advantage. 
Uh, Boone is stuffed this time. Took four guys to get him down, but they did get him down. On that play, they just built a wall. Just penetration, build a wall. There's nowhere for Boone to go. Just really been impressed with this front. DJ Taylor's had an active night. Talked about Carl Brooks, Mike Hair, Anthony Hawkins, Darren Anders, a linebacker. Everyone's gone in there. DJ Taylor, the transfer from Wake Forest, played for former Bowling Green head coach Dave Clawson. And it comes to Coach Clawson's old school. And having a big night at linebacker. Pressure. Third down for Gleason. Little bit off target on the throw. And Zyros can't reel it in. Fourth down. Bowling Green's had done a good job of bringing pressure and forcing some bad throws tonight. You see it off the offense's left side. So kind of getting a little bit in that throwing lane, causing a high throw. Almost picked. Oladokun had the coverage. Corner opposite of him, Jalen Burton is down in the field for Bowling Green. And Burton grabbing that right leg. Burton coming off before fourth down for this BG defense. I wonder if they're discussing the huddle right now. If they're going to go for this thing on fourth down. Four. Check out these numbers for Toledo on fourth down this year. 13 of 18 on fourth down. They've been good in this spot. I mean, that good on it. <laughs> You're much more likely to go for it. Went for it once tonight and got it. And down two scores. I mean, this is early fourth quarter still, but I don't know, maybe three or four possessions left in this game. I, I would punt this thing, but you know, it's, it may be looking again. I think just the fact that they've been so good on fourth down encourages them to go for it here. And an attack, but not open up rush lanes for Gleason. It's Newton in motion. They go on balance and roll the pocket. And Gleason throws a dart for a first down. Rolled the pocket and a redemptive catch for a first down. And inside the 15-yard line with Zyros. He almost had the catch on third down. And they go right back to him for a big play. Great job. He was scrambling off to his left. He keeps the eyes downfield. And Zyros just finds a soft spot in that zone and posts up. Great throw and catch. And Gleason going right back to him. So he's been the favorite target on this drive, but incomplete second down. Now Zyros had a big moment early in this season. He had a 50-yard touchdown catch at Ohio State. Grew up a Buckeye fan, too. He's played big in big games. Going back to your cliche from earlier. Big-time players, big-time plays, and big-time games. That's right. Well, Zyros out of the game after his big catch to extend the drive. And Gleason pumps, pocket closes, using his feet, and whirls inside the 10. He's close to a first down, needed the five, give him about the six and a half. He has a real good knack for, you know, when's the time to, the shot clock's going off in his head, he's getting pressure, he just finds a little bit of a crease and gets some positive yards. Starting tonight for an injured Daquan Finn. Trying to lead his team back. They trailed by 21. And it's Kelly sticking it in there. And he looks just short. They needed the five. And the linesman has him at the five and a half. So it's fourth down again. See Penny Boone coming into the game. The big running back. Also this area of the field. We do not see Jamal Turner out there. I just there checked in, yeah. bottom side. Yeah, bottom, he's in that slot. He's the red zone target. 
Yeah, two tight ends that way. Now they shift over with Torres and Turner. And on fourth and one, Boone had to get out of his own guy's way, and he finishes forward for the first down. Statement run right there by Toledo and Penny Boone. This offensive line, some fancy footwork, and then I mean, this is a guy. Once he gets going forward, he ain't going backwards. Look at that, driving some white jerseys back. Left guard Vinny Scurry almost tackled him though. <laughs> Sometimes you got to dodge your own guy too. So two fourth down conversions on this drive. One for fourth and four. One on fourth and one, and first and goal for Boone. You said it. Not finishing backwards. Does he have enough for the end zone? Not quite. Carl Brooks had the initial hit. That's big against big. <laughs> Keeping him out of the end zone. Got to love that. So look at Penny Boone. He's fired up. He's saying, feed me again. He's down this area of the field. He's feeling it. He stayed down there in the red area. Kept the drive going on fourth down. You see... Bowling Green going to a heavier package, bringing in three bigger bodies, bringing a couple of safeties off. I think they know what time it is. You're going to see a lot of Penny Boone here. We got three tight ends with Lenny Cool in there for Toledo on the left side. Yep, off the play fake, throw to the end zone. There's one of the tight ends, Turner. Touchdown, Toledo. Talked about Turner being a red zone option. But I think with how much they were feeding Penny Boone, they bring in bigger people. You just get a matchup there that you like. You know, that's Penny Boone on a line, or excuse me, Turner on a linebacker, Cassius Howell. And they get the matchup they want. So Turner, the guy that had the Mac West clincher with a minute to go against Ball State last week, brings his team within one score. This looked like he was headed toward a bad place for Toledo. A quarter plus in from down 21 zip to within six on a snowy night at the Glass Bowl in Toledo. out in the first quarter and the third quarter got it rolling with the Jamal Turner touchdown to start the fourth and trail it by just six after they were down 21 already bowl eligible already headed to the MAC title winning the West Bowling Green trying to join him with their sixth win and get some help from Ohio tonight with a win we'll get some help from Ball State anyway and up the sideline Bowling Green coming out with decent field position to try to go ahead by two scores again. Well, Champions Classic tonight in college basketball. Tomorrow, another good one. Top 15 hoops. Gonzaga against number 11, Texas. First big test for the Longhorns after their 2-0 start. Coverage starts at 8.30 Central from the Moody Center in Austin. They played last year. Drew Timmy is back. He's an All-American for Gonzaga. He had the game of his life last year against Texas. I think he scored 37, 38 points. I'll take your word for it. Bowling Green here, they cannot afford to go three and out here and punt this ball to Toledo with good field position. Yeah, broken up incomplete. He's getting ready to say, with Jay Billis, Connor Onion. That's what, that's what they call you, right? Of course, that's me. Big hoops guy. You want some college football knowledge on the guy? No. And Bowling Green's inability to run tonight, I mean, it, it, it's hurt them, but it really hurts them right here. They've just 25 rushes for 63 yards, 2.5 a carry at a time when you want to chew some clock. Bowling Green early second quarter is 21 zip. And Toledo has a 21 point comeback this year against Kent State. McDonald uh, gets it out in the check down. It's Patterson slipping out of a tackle. Uh, did nice well to move. make something out of that. As I say, made something out of nothing there. It was a great move by Patterson. Let's get a third and manageable here. Mark McDonald, he was feeling the pressure. He steps up in it. There's Patterson out in the flat. 
would have been about third, nine, third, and eight. Instead, it's third and three because of that play. Lair, he's in that bunch formation at the bottom of your screen here. You're going to see in a second. And three of 11 on third down tonight for Bowling Green. McDonald has time. Gets it out, and a great catch by Hilaire. And he's out of a tackle. Hilaire with the night of his life with a touchdown. At the end of the day, Connor, offense isn't that hard. In the big moments of the game, find your best player. Don't think plays, think players. Get the ball in the hands of Hilaire because he's been phenomenal tonight and he makes another humongous play. Watch this. I mean, he's fighting off the line. He just gets up a little bit. One hand is behind him. Finds a way to snag that thing and then the speed down the sideline. And that is just a backbreaker for Toledo. I mean, what a night that young man has had. And he's known for doing that, one-handed catches. That's Hilaire's thing. He was at Alabama A&M before. He had one that went viral against Jackson State and had as spectacular of a four-yard catch you'll ever see against Western Michigan earlier this year. But Hilaire, it's been all about him tonight on offense for BG. It has. Fantastic catch. Been big moments of the game. Go to your best player. He's having a heck of a night. And he continues with it in Bowling Green. Making a statement late. We'll see if Toledo can respond. Remember the name. One of the best receiving nights in Bowling Green history. Third all time. Now close to 250 yards. His second touchdown puts the Falcons up by two scores. Well, hey, coming up next on ESPNU, over on ESPN News right now, it's number 18 Alabama at South Alabama going to Mobile. Good for Nate Oates, the uh, former Mac coach, coached at Buffalo. And uh, that'll be Mike Morgan and Mark Wise on the call right after our game closes out. Like that tie-in rock? I love it. It's all about Maxion, baby. Maxion. <laughs> I'm just having such a good time watching this game here tonight. This has been back and forth, and you got teams responding and momentum swings. I mean, this is what you love out of midweek match. All right, we'll, we'll talk about hoops together after the game, though. <laughs> Get me caught up, Connor. <laughs> so Toledo down by two scores on a night where they trailed by as many as 21, and a good special teams tackle. And we'll set them up outside the 22. So Bowling Green has led this game throughout. They have nine minutes to hold on, get to bowl eligibility for the first time since 15 and beat their rival. And I'm sure that man right there, Carl Brooks. Uh, or that man, or too. Not, yeah, that guy, too. They could use him on that defensive line. That's a big boy. But Carl Brooks has been a menace tonight leading that defensive line front seven for Bowling Green. They have gotten after Tucker Gleason. One of the big plays in the second half. Toledo fumbled at the two-yard line on a big passing play. And Gleason pressure in his face. Ball wobbling. And that ball is incomplete. The flag is out in the secondary. Jordan Anderson almost picked it off. After Walter Hare was right in the face of Tucker Gleason. There was a lot happening. A lot going on there. Maybe some pass interference on, on the top of the screen there. There's the pressure by Hare. Comes straight up the middle and just gets underneath the arm and Gleason can't follow through and that ball hangs up in the air. You see the pass interference at the top of the screen. I don't know. The referee might have been on. on so. It was Zyros running the route. Gleason has looked to him a lot in the third and fourth quarter. And Gleason given time. This time, ball pops out. And that's incomplete. Incomplete pass. Close. And Newton had it in his hands, and then it came free. That was real close to being a fumble. 
There you go, let's check this out here. Colin Field was in their possession. That's real close. Real close. And Deshaun Jones came in there and punched it out. He might be able to make the argument. He has control, reestablishes his feet. So he didn't really have time to make a football move, whatever that is. But. You want to you go further on that? No, I don't. I'm going to end right there. <laughs> That's close, but it was a nice play. Right, Leeson, who's playing for an injured quarterback, Daquan Finn. Got that tape on his Damn. left hand. Been playing with that since halftime. And over the middle, that's almost picked. Two drops in a row. And Penny Boone, a little bit behind him. A little bit. But incomplete. You need Hilaire to reach back with that one hand and all that thing in. He's got some, some plastic on that thing. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I mean, Tucker Gleason's been a warrior tonight. It's like he's taken a few of the bars from the helmet, from the face mask, right to the bicep, too. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if Bowling Green brings pressure. Nope, just four. And Gleason recovers after a low snap, pointing out blockers. Gleason using his legs across the 45, and he's got the first down. It seems like the times tonight where Bowling Green has rushed just four, but that's been the times when Gleason has been able to escape. Really done a good job picking up yards with his legs tonight. So what do you think? Bring some five, six-man pressure? Yeah, I, I feel like the more, the more times they brought five and six, it, it just kind of clogs up that middle. doesn't allow any room for him to run. There's well, they bring pressure. five. And he gets off a good throw anyway. Devin Maddox makes the play through that five-man pressure. What a championship gutsy throw by Tucker Gleason. I mean, he knows when he releases this ball, he is going to get laid out. Got a linebacker coming free. That was Anders right up the gut. Ball hangs in the air, but Max comes down with a great job by Gleason. I showed you the tape, some of the bruises. Makes a big throw, and Kelly off a couple of hits for a good gain on first down. Well, take away that first quarter. There's some really good things that Gleason's putting on tape tonight. He really has. You know, the Georgia Tech transfer, the three-star recruit, number 26, drop back quarterback in the country when he came out. He's come here to Toledo, and this is Dewan Finn's team, but Tucker Gleason's played well tonight. Gleason off the play fake, and he checks it down at a diving catch by Kelly. And he has enough for the first out. Gleason's been in tight games, big moments this year. It was a 3-0 game in September against San Diego State. He got thrown in. And also won them the game in Eastern Michigan. Michigan. Yeah, he was West Player of the Week. And Kelly to the outside, and Brock Horn says no to that. Uh, it's so important in, in college football to have backup quarterback that can come in and be productive. And anymore, it, it's even more of a luxury because these days, if a guy isn't the starting quarterback, what does he do? It's a transfer report, right? So you know, a luxury. And these teams, you know, something happens to your quarterback most of the time, whether it's a game or a series or something, you got to have someone that can come in and play well, and Tucker Gleason's done that. Off of the play fake. Pressure again, and he can't get out this time. Dontrez Brown adding to the big night for the front for Bowling Green. And that pressure, Connor, is just right up in his face. And you can see his hand is hurting. Just rush three and then delay blitz. Just a little tackle end stunt. And Brown just comes up underneath and finds a crease and is right in the chops of Gleason. Low snap. First sack of the year for Brown. And tight window throw to Maddox. First down. Gleason with another gutsy throw, and the drive lives on. Incredible throw. I mean, DJ Taylor, the linebacker, is in that throwing lane, and he throws that ball high just out of the reach of Taylor in the middle of three other white jerseys to bring it down. And then Devin Maddox having a big couple of weeks, a big play threat goes for 25 more. 
And Kelly stays in inside the red zone. This is where Penny Boone's gotten a lot of the carries tonight. See if they go to him on second down. Here comes Penny Boone back into the field here. This area of the field, last couple drives has been Penny Boone, and then we had earlier the touchdown by Jamal Turner. There's Turner in that wing position there. Byron Torres, the tight end. Got to watch for him. Got to watch for Penny Boone. Gotta watch for Gleason keeping it on the run. He had the touchdown scamper early in the first quarter. Look into the end zone. He's got Newton for six. Back to a one-score game for Toledo. I mean, that's just a great job by Tucker Gleason and this Toledo team responding. I mean, you get the gut punch touchdown by Hilaire. And they get the ball back and, and just come down and answer. And it's what great teams do. Toledo is one of the best teams in the MAC. You say that without question, and they're not going to go down easy here. They're right back in this thing. PAT good. And Derwan Newton with his ninth touchdown catch of the year, tying Sam Wigless at Ohio for the MAC lead. Tucker Gleason. He's taking some shots, he's taking some hits, but he has delivered. Throws a touchdown pass to Newton. And now we'll see if Bowling Green can respond. We've got 5.09 left to go here in Toledo. The fans brave in the snow tonight at the Glass Bowl and a treat. It's a one score game, just over five minutes to go. Open the show talking about the 25 miles of hate between Bowling Green and Toledo, one of the closest FBS rivalries as far as mileage in the country. And six points separating them with five to go. And it's Embry who had a touchdown called back earlier. Not near the 30-yard line for Bowling Green. Maybe trying to put this game away to go back up. Well, the new college football playoff rankings just came out tonight. And the top four unchanged. Two of those top four in action on state. And Saturday, Michigan hosts Illinois at the Big House. Ohio State tries to stay unbeaten against Maryland at 3.30 on ABC. Miami and Clemson and Tennessee and South Carolina close out a big Saturday with just a couple of weeks to go until postseason. For Ohio State, everything's going to come down to, like it most does most years, that end of the game, end of the season game against Michigan. And a good start to the drive for Bowling Green. Harold Fannin has a first down. Harold Fannin, he had some runs earlier in the game. We haven't seen him much until now. They had a carry early in the game. They had a couple carries earlier, the old uh, tight end wildcat formation that's used so often. Well, football's version of the closer has been Max and Hook the past couple of weeks. He's down in the field for Toledo. Back-to-back -to -back weeks with an interception to close the game. Yeah, he's like a, a linebacker that just plays the safety position. He is great stopping that run. Hopefully he's okay. He's a good player. He's off of that right leg. Max and Hook coming off. To making the tackle on Fannin on first down. Man. He's, he's bloodied up, too. Cut up, yeah. It's been a battle tonight. We've, we've seen some great hits. We've seen, you know, a little chippiness back and forth amongst these teams earlier. And we got Tucker Gleason. The quarterback, his hands all banged up. It's, it's a war out there. I mean, if you're a fan either here or watching on TV, you've gotten your money's worth out of this midweek match. Don't they always? Oh, heck yeah. That's what you love about it. Especially in this rivalry. Bowling Green, no doubt. they've won once in the last 12 games against Toledo. It was 2019, Scott Leffler's first year as the head coach. About four and a half minutes away from a second. And Toledo has closed the 21-point gap. So Bowling Green is going to let this play clock blow down to about probably get it under five seconds to bleed as much of it off as they can. 
Down inside five before they finally snap it. And McDonald throws again. It's Lewis staying inbounds. And the, uh, Keith, excuse me, the, the running back makes the catch. A couple yards from Keith. And it's second and seven. I mean, the big thing about Bowling Green is it's just you need positive plays, right? No negative plays and no penalties. Penalties have killed them tonight at, at times. Just got to keep these chains moving. Nothing negative. And, and if you're Matt McDonald, you've had a fantastic night. You've gone over 300 yards, a career high, three touchdowns, but cannot afford to force the ball into a bad situation right here. It's not there. Throw it away. Live to fight another down. Well, there's 12 penalties have kept Toledo close, including the interception for Jawan Johnson. And they do run it. Let some clock, and it's third down. This is massive right here. Toledo down one score with all three timeouts and plenty of time. This is it right here. Here it comes. He comes back in the game. There's Hilaire. He was money. He's been money all game. But on that critical third down where he had the, the touchdown over the middle. You're the guy on the left, Scott Leffler, Bowling Green's head coach. You're throwing this, right? I think you've got to throw this, yeah. I mean, they haven't been able to run much tonight. You've got Hilaire at the top of the screen. Tight coverage. Vince Karras, the defensive coordinator, dialing up some pressure, and the throw is off target to Fannin. Only two down in the dirt there, but pressure came, and the quick throw incomplete, and it's fourth down. Uh, it's a good job of getting up in the face of Hilaire and disrupting his route. You can't give him an easy release off the line of scrimmage, and that just upset the timing of that whole play. So Adam Beal and Toledo are getting it back. They have not led tonight. Bowling Green has led ever since a first quarter touchdown from McDonald to Odu Hilaire. Led by as many as 21. A fair catch for Beal. So last week, Toledo was tied against Ball State. They went down and scored with a minute to go. Can they take the lead against their rival, Bowling Green? Ben West. Now can Illinois muddy things up in the East against Michigan at the Big House on Saturday. That's a noon Eastern. Ohio State unbeaten at Maryland, Miami and Clemson, and Tennessee at South Carolina, 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app on a statement Saturday. Well, that Michigan team looks tough. Hey, they, they'll punch you in the mouth now. Number four rush offense in the country. But here we go. Bowling Green's defense step up. Make another stop. Snow falling again. It has most of the night. Toledo has not led tonight, and a good start to their drive with Jamal Turner. Had a touchdown earlier. He gets a first down. A lot of potential go-ahead drive for Toledo. Bingo. You know, want to go on a game-winning drive, start that thing off with a positive chunk yardage play. Confidence building. Well, last week, it was Daquan Finn at quarterback. He huddled the guys on the sideline and said, guys, this is a championship drive right here. This week it's Tucker Gleason at quarterback and back-to-back -back completions to start the drive and a submarine in Kelly has a first down but a flag back down behind the play. Opposite of where that running catch went. Offense, over 71, 10-yard down, previous spot, remains first down. Vinny Scurry, left guard, holding. Man, critical time to have a penalty. And it's been Bowling Green most of the night. And I still feel like it's best for Bowling Green to bring pressure. And they've allowed Tucker Gleason time back there. He's either been able to complete the throws or been able to find rush lanes. And they go with just four. I mean, he finds one too. And he gets out of it again. And he gets all the penalty yardage back and a lot more. Close to a first down. And he did it through the air to Turner. Now on the ground. And Gleason, very strong yeah, start. It, it's just it, most times tonight when they rush four, you see that, that thing has just opened up because they're aggressive. They're getting up field. They're rushing the passer. And Gleason has made the right decision to tuck that thing and run. I, I think they need to bring a fifth guy or a sixth guy to clog up those interior rush lanes 
and also get pressure on him as he throws. Over 100 yards on the ground for Gleason. Four-man pressure again, and Gleason all sorts of time. Complete to Maddox for a first down. Chris Bacon finally made the stop, but this thing is moving for the Rockets. Gleason standing tall in the pocket. Maddox, he just has a knack for finding those open areas in that zone. Great catch. A muddy pocket this time, and he goes down. And push the pile forward. Did get positive yards. You can see, just you, you go with five right there. It just makes it a little bit harder for him to escape. He's not able to have those big runs he's had when he rushed four. Got to have a touchdown. Down by six. Just outside a minute to go. Toledo students have stayed all night. Through the snow, through the rain, through the cold. Gleason, incomplete. Reaching try by Newton. And a big third down coming. Just missed Newton, but I'll tell you what, I wouldn't be scared to go back to him here. He had a big night. He was at 25, he had a touchdown. Just a little bit high. For Toledo, they're trying to break the spirit of their rival. Deny them bowl eligibility, deny them an outside chance at playing in Detroit for the MAC championship. Bowling Green has beaten these guys only once since 2009. Spreading the field out. Pressure up the middle. And Gleason on the run, threw it on target, but it's dropped. Barkley would have had the first down. Instead, this is for the game. And Toledo got away with a hole with big time. I think it was on, yeah, you can see right there, Leffler saying, uh, I mean, J.B. Brown was just horse collared and pulled around. Watch this. And that's a and that's right there, pretty clear from the referee. But it comes down to this right here. Right. So seven yards to keep the game going. And there's Newton. He's in the second receiver from the top of the screen. You've been calling for pressure. They're showing it. Bowling Green showing it. We got six guys up at the line of scrimmage. Yep. They bring four, but the play blown dead. It's a good thing for Toledo. That pass would have been knocked down. Game would have been over. So the first time out for Jason Charged Candle. Time out Toledo. Their first 30 seconds. And they've been money on fourth down tonight. Three for three, but haven't had one at this distance quite yet. Well, just a couple of hours ago, the new college football playoff rankings came out. The top four unchanged. Obviously, your four undefeateds are at the top, but interesting at five and six with Tennessee and LSU. Both an Alabama win, but Tennessee beat LSU. Absolutely. I think you're LSU. You have the two losses, but you know you went out, you beat Georgia in the SEC championship game, and you are in. You know, for Tennessee, you want LSU to win out and then lose to Georgia in the SEC title game, then you would get in. I, I think there's a chance that Tennessee – could get in over the loser of Ohio State Michigan because they have a better strength of schedule. And if you're TCU, you just got to keep winning, baby. You know, if you stay undefeated, it's going to be hard to keep them out of that college football playoff. All right, Rock, real quick, your call here on fourth down for Toledo. Trying to find, there's Newton, second receiver from the top. A fourth down and seven to keep the game going. Going up top, that's complete. The game continues, and a first down, Maddox. Is in for a touchdown. Unbelievable. Max it. You gotta love it. Fourth down. Game on the line. And, and Maddox is open. Rolling on the field is a touchdown. The previous play is under review. He makes the catch and let's see if he, he stay. Ah, oh, that right foot goes out before he hits that pylon. I think that's going to be down at about the one yard line, if not the half yard line. And, and this one, they just rushed three. They still were able to get to Gleason, but he's able to have enough time to get the throw off. Usually if you rush three, 
Well, he's got eight in coverage. There's not many holes to throw that ball, but Max finds one. Might be just a yard away from giving Toledo the lead. Down all night. Trailed by 21 points. And either into the end zone or a yard away with inside a minute to go from leading. Or at least getting it tied before the PAT. I've been so impressed with Tucker Gleason. He's been hit tonight. He's had a run for some tough yards. And in the game's most critical play, he's able to Stand tall in the pocket, deliver. And I really believe this is going to come back. There's that, 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 that foot is in the white right there. Seemingly before. Now the only thing is, that, I mean, you, you don't have the view right down that line. You know, so it's an indisputable video evidence. That's what it would take. You know, I don't know that there is. I was going to say, I, I think now that as you look at it, Indisputable video evidence. Got to jump off the screen without that camera angle going right down that goal line. It may be hard for them to overturn this after it was called a touchdown late. Right there. I mean, to me, it looks like he's short, but the, the angle is what makes it tough. Yeah, I don't know if you can guarantee that. I, say, I, I think it, it's short, but is it indisputable video evidence? think that again my eyeballs if you're asking what happened on play I think you hit the balls on the one one yard line or half yard line it's just can depend how the replay officials and those folks on the field view this thing with an angle and that might be advantage Toledo too because you'd run another play right now 52 seconds and two timeouts for BG to go down the other way it's true Wait some more clock here's the call After review, the ruling on the field has changed. Yep. The ball carrier was short of the goal line when he stepped out of bounds with the ball inside the one yard line. It'll be first and goal, Toledo inside the one. We set the game clock to 53 seconds. Maddox is thinking, oh, that was my moment. Oh, the the clock in the battle of 575. Yeah. Potential game winner. They're gonna get the ball in great field position. To your point, Connor, you know, Here's the angle, first time seeing this. Okay, so, so now with that angle there, you can see it steps out there and the ball's on the half yard line. So you must have pieced that together. That, that angle shows it. But you're you're commenting on the point of Bowling Green almost wanted him to score there. Yeah, I know. At that point, now, obviously not in the fourth down, but now with the time situation. Got Penny Boone in the backfield. Big running back. So Maddox down at the one on a fourth and seven. And they motion Boone out of there. Gleason to keep it himself, and this game is tied. Score. Bowling Green let him score right there. And they'll have two timeouts with 51 seconds left on the clock. You can see they, they don't attack. They're, they're letting him score right there. So a difference of two seconds. Was it 53? Clock now at 51 seconds and two timeouts for Bowling Green. But obviously a huge PAT coming here and it is clean for Thomas Clucky. So Toledo leads for the first time tonight. With 51 seconds left, they put together a drive just like last week going down late in the game to go ahead. What a warrior. What a warrior Tucker Gleason has been. Wasn't sure all week if he was going to be starting this game. Turned out he was with 
Daquan Finn being hurt and, and just look what he's been able to do. Now, to me, that was a turning point for him. After that run there, we just a little roughed up and punched it in. After that, he started playing really well. A lot of confidence, making good decisions, good play calling here. Goes ahead and finds his tight end, Jamal Turner. And he's made some great throws, found Maddox, found Turner. And 21 of 39, 311 yards, three touchdowns on the night for Tucker Gleason. Rock, this is only the second start for him in about three years. He was at Georgia Tech, sat for a couple of years here, and in back-to-back -back starts, his first two college starts, he's led fourth quarter go-ahead drives. Now, will it be a game winner? It's Embry out across the 25. So Bowling Green just needs a field goal with two timeouts and 47 seconds left. And Ohio has already won tonight, so Bowling Green cannot go to the MAC title game, but they'd still need that Bowling Green loss. Yeah, they would. They would need that loss. Here. Mark on the snap and pump it. Yeah. They need the Bowling Green loss, but if Bowling Green gets the six wins, they would also set up a massive game next week at Ohio. Now if I'm Toledo, I'm finding Olaire. He's at the top of the screen. Got to have at least have a safety over top of him as well. That's been the go-to guy. He's had a fantastic night. Cannot let him beat you. Over 200 yards on the night for Hilaire. McDonald moves the pocket. Running away and going down. Oh. Throw it away. Man. Deontay Johnson runs him down, and Bowling Green has to take a timeout. You've got to waste time out there. You've got to throw that ball away. You, you, you got to have, you got to know, and be realistic with yourself. Can you outrun that defender to the corner, and if you can't, you got to throw that ball away. It, well, if he did, he would have had big yards and probably gets out of bounds. But he didn't. He's not. Had to use the timeout. He's not. Juan Finn, he's not Tucker Gleason running the ball. I mean, Matt McDonald's a fantastic quarterback, but you know, being fleet of foot is, is not what he's the best at. I mean, he's smarter now. Throw that ball away, save a timeout. Instead, you take a big sack. Yeah, the yardage huge, too. The time, huge, obviously. Yeah. We're losing five yards. Lose five yards, lose a timeout. Just an awful play to start a potential game winning drive. Bowling Green led it 21-0. Toledo just took their first lead. And Matt McDonald looking for his first battle of I-75 win as the starter. And his receiver falls down. He was breaking open over the middle, and Tyrone Broden lost his feet. Oh, this guy is still down. Officials timeout for an injured player on the offense. Look at he's just got his feet tangled up with the. With the Chris McDonald there. there. McDonald, yeah. So Broden, the second favorite target of McDonald, hobbling off on a big third down coming. Two plays to get 15 yards for Scott Leffler in Bowling Green. Needing a field goal to win this game. And, and if you're Leffler right now, obviously you're expecting, you're expecting Hilaire to be double covered. And Hilaire almost 250 yards on the night. Couple of touchdowns. And no Broden. One of McDonald's best targets. Gets out of a sack. And throws down field complete. He's got Sims the tight end. 
So that flips the field into plus territory. And now Bowling Green inching toward field goal range. And that's your next best option, Sims. And a good job by McDonald just keeping the play alive and allowing his tight end to get to the other side of the field and get open. So just outside the 40 with one timeout. And play blown dead. Prior to the snap, charge timeout, Toledo, number two, 30 seconds in length. And so Deontay Johnson at linebacker turned around, got the timeout from the umpire. So you're thinking 28-yard line here. That's the spot you got to get to for the kicker, Mason Lawler, to attempt right at his season long of 45 yards. makes from just inside the 40-yard line tonight. Both have been true, both with plenty of leg. Yep. And you see the snow coming snow down. There's, coming down. There, there's, there's not much wind, though. No, there hasn't been wind, which a lot of times in this stadium, <laughs> I've seen it a lot. Swirling, gusting wind, that, that's not going to be a factor. You do wonder about the operation on a wet night. So far, it's been true twice for Lawler. But what a huge play from Sims. Even have this conversation with Lawler. Warming up to potentially kick a game winner. Yeah, Hilaire at the bottom, and Sims is second from the bottom. I think the ball's got to go to one of those two guys here. McDonald given time, incomplete. Zachary Ford with the coverage. And he was trying to go right back to Sims, who just had the big play. It was a little bit high. He had a lair open, but he was crossing the middle of the field, and you run the risk of getting tackled and having to waste another timeout. And trying to stay alive in the Mac East race with Ohio already winning. Ohio would clinch with a Bowling Green loss. Bowling Green would be bowl eligible. And they go to Athens against first place Ohio next week. 25 seconds to go. McDonald lost the ball. Incomplete. Jamal Hines sandwiched him down. He got hit hard. And I'm not sure if they, they were this dead. The ruling on the field is of a forward pass. It was incomplete. Third down. Wow, he took a shot from Hines. How do you come back from that if you're McDonald? He's a tough kid. But just a, I mean, just a speed rush off the outside. Clock operator, please he just reset gets the hit game right clock underneath one second. the armpit. Mm. Throwing arm, too. Yep. Coach talks about Jamal Hines again, a potential NFL guy one day. A couple of seconds back on the clock. They wound it down to 17. They put four seconds back on. Bowling Green with that one timeout. Still a ways to go. Got to get a first down and a little bit more to get into field goal range for Lawler. Got to get past that 30-yard line. 28 is that target. 28-yard line, the target. We get to Lawler season high. From the 42 on third and 10. And Hines nearly got home again. McDonald runs away, has it complete, and there goes Keith into field goal range with the first down, off a tackle, end zone! This is Maxion! <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. Look at this place. Teron Keith running back. And Toledo fans are stunned. I think Bowling Green fans are stunned. Look at this. Wow. Really Scores with nine seconds out. left. Excuse me, it was a touchdown. Timeout, Bowling Green. Third and final, 30 seconds in length. 
The season is very much alive for Bowling Green. And, and just what a gutsy call. Uh, I mean, if Toledo. you're Toledo's defense, you're thinking the ball's going to Hilaire, the ball's going to Christian Sims, and that's what good offenses do. You know, you take away our best couple options, you find a third one, and they nailed it. Scott Leffler said this week, losing Terrion Stewart, their running back before the season. We've got running backs. They're good at going for seven or eight yards. We're waiting for a running back to go 50 yards. He did there. He did. That was a game breaker. Nine seconds left. Bowling Green going back up a score. And Toledo came all the way back from down 21 until Bowling Green did this after McDonald took that shot the play before. He steps up the pocket and then just has to throw across his body to a, a streaking to Ron Keith. He's got two guys on him. And then can't make the tackle. He punches it in for the touchdown. I mean, just a great job. You've got to give it to Matt McDonald. What a huge play, just staying alive. He has the pressure, steps up. He keeps his eyes downfield and finds his running back streaking. So they'll go for two. Bowling Green will go for two to try to make it a field goal game. With nine seconds left. I'm sorry, make it a, a seven-point game. Up by five. And McDonald rolls out, and he hits Keith again. Why not? You got to. You got to. <laughs> Scott Leffler saying, don't dance too much. No, we can't afford a penalty no. on the kick. Don't do any of that. We've got nine seconds to go. Come back to the sideline, got nine seconds, and then we can celebrate. Goes back to Teron Keith. Love that play call, too. Running back out in the flat. I mean, just so many big plays tonight in critical situations. And it's under a minute. Tucker Gleason, Toledo's quarterback, with the deep pass and then the touchdown, and you think the game's over. But Matt McDonald said, not so fast. See, see that? He just took his 10th hit of the night. <laughs> I know. Uh, and to get hit before that, he took a sack earlier in the drive. It was not looking good. No, that, that's how the no. drive started. It, it did. I mean, you, you want to start off a, a drive to win the game with something positive, and that was the exact opposite of positive. You take a sack, you lose five yards, you have to waste a timeout, and you're thinking, this is not going well, fellas. And then you got Chris Sims with a big catch, and then the backbreaker. By Keith. So the kickoff goes into the end zone and the clock winds. Toledo bringing it out and trouble at the goal line. Was he in the end zone? They're walking the spot off right at the goal line. Rolling on the field is that the runner was tackled with his progress at the one yard line. Uh, so 99 yards to go with five seconds left for Toledo. I mean, wow. Just... just let that ball go. I, I, mm. yeah, they didn't give him forward progress. That ball's going to be about the one yard line. All right, so five seconds left, one timeout. Obviously, that doesn't mean much. This is probably the last play, unless you go real quick and then take the timeout. And possibly one play to the sideline, but, you know, at, at this point, I think you're better off trying to set yourself up to be able to drop back, then step up in the pocket and, and heave one here. You know, if, you, if you're Bowling Green, you got to watch for some sort of you know, hook and lateral sort of situation. And I, I think you're not going to just toss this ball downfield. I would look for a bunch of throwbacks. So final play of the game, Gleason, who's been great all night. 
Throws it, and they'll have to. They won't pitch it. Game is over. Mm. Bowling Green still alive in the East. We got the officials still on the field, blowing the whistle. That's the end of the game. An official now. That's it. So Bowling Green, one game behind Ohio, headed to Athens for the regular season finale next week. Pull a stunner with Teron Keith beating Gleason and Toledo with nine seconds to go. Tucker Gleason, Gleason can't believe it. I mean, this game, Connor, had absolutely everything. Bowling Green goes up 21. Looks like they're going to run away with it. Toledo fights back. They get their lead finally with about under a minute. And then, unbelievably, Bowling Green puts together a final drive to win it. Is every game with you like this? Uh, I, I, man, let's do it again let's if it, it is. Again, <laughs> I love it. To Ron this Keith. is fun. To Ron Keith with a historic moment in this rivalry. It had been a long time coming for Bowling Green. Only one win in the last decade and a half against Toledo. And this was the play that sealed it. To Ron Keith from 42. One they'll remember in Bowling Green for a long time. Trampling his way to bowl eligibility for Bowling Green. We send you out to hoops for our entire crew. Rocky Boyman, Connor Onion saying goodnight from Toledo at the Glass Bowl. And we welcome those of you who are watching some action football in the MAC. We take you to basketball here at the Mitchell Center in Mobile, Alabama. Little SEC Sunbelt Clash, Alabama, leading the Jaguars 32-22 at the half. As we welcome you inside, he is Mark Wise. I am Mike Morgan. Entertaining first half. Again, this is the first time these two teams have ever met Mobile, only the fifth time overall. So, needless to say, this is not your typical crowd for this time of year. It's a lot of juice in the building. I saw a lot of juice on the floor. These players are giving it their all mark in a very physical first half. Yeah, a choppy first half. Neither team shot the ball well, so the difference in the first half...